Hey y'all, I'm Courtney. And I'm Sarah. And this is Vada Stiplers. The podcast where we read all the books we used to steal off our grandmother's nightstands. And then we drink about it. On this episode, we read John Norman's Kajira of Gore. Uh, you should definitely not read this book if you are not into like deep sexual slavery, um, like sword and planet style slavery where everybody is young and hot and naked and completely submitted to each other. So that's not, not the book for you because the word juicing hmm? is in it a lot. I, I actually, because I read it on Kindle, I was able to do the math. Um, the word slave is used 1,066 times in this book. Um, keep in mind as we go through this podcast that this has nothing to do, and we're not going to talk about it like it has anything to do with historical slavery or real people in any sense. This is a sex fantasy. And, and yeah, so please don't try to equate it with anything that has ever happened or will happen to real humans. Um, it, you know, uh, we're going to use the word slave a lot, which I don't prefer to use when talking about historical slavery. So just be ready for that. Also, anything we have to say about this book is not kink shaming. It's just about this book. So, um, whatever you like to do, you should go and do it with another consenting adult and we support you and we love you for it. Um, that doesn't mean that Tiffany in this book is not a fucking dumbass though. So it's, oh, it's, it's like that. Good old Tiffany. <laughs> All right. So Yeah. We have a very special guest with us today. I know. I'm very I'm excited, so excited. too. Um, we're going to let her introduce herself because she will do a much better job of it than we will because she's way more charming and funny than either one of us. So take it away. Please yes. introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Honey, or otherwise known as, well, my full name is Miss Honey Analverka. So I know the real reason why you let me introduce myself is because you can't say my last name, isn't it? A little bit, like a little bit. I was like, ready to stop it. Like, I was like, it's going to come out like it was going to be some long yet, R's in there. But... And I was like, I, I, yeah, it was going to be not nearly as cute as that. It'd been like a, a like bad corny, like burger kind of thing. So, yeah, <laughs> the burger, yeah. like I would have gotten all nervous and tripped over it. So, yeah. Well, it actually breaks down. It's German, and you got like anal, and then Verker is traffic. So, you're like anal traffic. So, <laughs> If that helps you remember it. Oh, I was thinking worker like yeah, hard yeah. hat, like construction. Yeah, like seeing one of those, like you know the the um the road cones. I don't know if you have those in America on your old construction site, but I've actually seen like anal insertions done with that, like a giant one of those. We do have road cones. <laughs> now my mind's just blown, and I'm like, wow, like I'm trying to unpack that. But that's yeah, that's outstanding. Okay, so Miss Honey, anal worker. There, I did it. I did it. Yay. <laughs> Yes, I do. I have um I have a po- podcast that I co host with my daughter and it's called My Mum is a Porn Star. Um because shockingly, with a name like Anal Verka, I happen to be an Aussie porn star that specializes in anal. Whoa. Who would have seen that one coming? Um <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> well, probably not sure, but came out from behind. Oh, I do love a good button. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so um, me and my daughter co-host it. She's an adult for anybody that's like stressing, going, "Oh my god, you're corrupting the children." Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. So me and my daughter, we co-host it. It's a sex ed podcast um we talk a lot about the sex work industry and there being porn or full service sex work domination sort of stuff because um i'm also a dominatrix and do full service sex work as well so um yeah we cover lots of stuff and um it's a lot of fun and it's we don't use big words as our is our rule really simple down to earth straight shooting bogan as fuck well i do believe that would be like a redneck in america yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah but um yeah that's our, our our podcast so our little way to try and help the world have access to real sex education instead of the bullshit that's taught in schools or not taught really yes i love it it's so good and it's just so like down to earth and honest and all about like good sexual health which with the books that we read is something that is super important because you know thinking about like these books especially oh, the ones that we look at like 
you know, one of the things that we talk about is like, this is where you got all your sexual information from was these insane books. And it kind of sets you up for a wild ass adulthood of like actually learning how sexual politics and sex work once you become an adult in the world and realize like Joanna Lindsay and especially Jude Devereaux maybe aren't, you know, (laughs) the best (laughs) examples. Oh, yeah. I especially when I was going to say oh, yeah, no, definitely. Because especially seeing as even though like you know I'm not sure of your ages, but I know I grew up without the internet and I didn't have any way to guide or educate myself. Yes. But even now that people have the access to the internet, a lot of the time you do a search history and the results are really dumbed down, and we're still not taught about consent or if mm-hmm. we are, we're not taught how that really looks in real life. Yes, yeah, exactly. So yeah, it could be really awkward. Go, oh yeah, I know I should do this consent thing, but how the fuck, you know? So <laughs> being able to chat about that is, um, yeah, especially <laughs> with my daughter because she's only twenty one. So um, <laughs> the poor darling, I do um, I do burn her ears at times. The poor darling, I think she wants to quietly vomit in the corner some of the <laughs> stuff. I tell her. Hey, yeah, yeah, I love it, and I love y'all's like dynamic and chemistry. So everybody, go listen to their podcast because it's so fun. Yeah. Oh, what is it's, the name of the podcast? Yeah, again, for or for those funny? again to repeat, it's my mom, M U M, all my Carolina and American people. It's my mom is a porn star. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Aussie spelling with a U, not an O. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and wherever you podcast, right? It says it's on Apple Podcasts and yeah, yeah, it's on all the things it's on Apple, it's yeah. on Spotify, it's on Google. It's yeah, Google us, you'll find us. And if you if you're looking for me, if you just Google Miss Honey Anal because I know nobody can spell anal worker, <laughs> <laughs> you will find me too. So. Yes. Um. All right. Well, if it gives you a little bit of context, we both um we are, but well. I'm still 40. Courtney is much older. (laughs) Courtney is now 41. So we were reading books right at this time period. The book that we're about to read is from 84. And we were reading all these books, um, usually by female authors like Joanna Lindsay. And the biggest like weird sexual misinformation thing that you come into contact with in all of these books is this weird um, losing virginity Mm. scene. Yeah, like yeah. this weird hymen scene yeah. that, like, it's in all the books. And, and you know, what's the other thing too about hymens. This is this is just a pet peeve about once again. This is one of my pet peeves, you know, with society and how poor the education around sex is, and that most people don't understand that. You know, depending on what age you is, your hymens can be muscular or it can be a piece of skin. So. Before you go through puberty, it's muscular, and if you tear, like you have sex, and it just tears and reheals, and wow, it's still there. It doesn't just disappear. It's like so. This whole construct of going, oh, she's lost her virginity, and I can tell because she doesn't have a hymen. Well, no, no, it does. Hymens don't work like that. <laughs> Well, in romance novels, there's this trope, and it's crazy because it is almost always identical. And the fascinating thing to me is that this book didn't have it. And this is the book that I would have expected to have it, where he's trying to be tender, but he's he's he just can't handle it because she's so amazing. So he gets like I don't from from reading this, you would assume he gets like what four fucking (laughs) inches in, (laughs) and then he like gets ready, and and he's like it only took a minute, baby, and then like. (laughs) <laughs> and then she screams and it hurts, but then then she has an orgasm. <laughs> I think it is interesting in this one because it's the same in every book. In this book, like virginity doesn't seem to be prized. Like in Yeah. Which is fascinating because usually in this kind of like selling yeah. women thing, like mm. you know, in Yeah, it, very much so. like experience and training and skill is valued far more than any Yeah. yeah. So which Personally, I agree with <laughs> if we yeah. were going to value one thing or another, because I don't look at virginity as something to lose. I look at it as an experience you gain. You know, you haven't, it's right. not like your purse that you can just like put it down and go, oh, fuck, where did I put that? I've lost it. <laughs> it's like, no. It's an experience you gain. You are no lesser for having had sex. You've gained knowledge and experience. So it's like, <laughs> Right, that's 
And I, I imagine that a lot of people must have found a lot of liberation in right. this kind of gore book, because like, unlike in the romance novels that we were reading, like once that happens to you often, then like the rest of your life is trying to like immediately fix it with these women. Like they have to yeah. like get that guy to marry them or they have to, you know, like, um, like they're, they're now ruined. They're now, you know, now that they've like been taken by the chic, you know, like, there's all these different things, but they have to, um, they have to fix that problem now because now they're, they're unmarriageable or they're like, whatever. Um, whereas in this book, like, yeah, it's okay, so, completely hold on. no big The book deal. that we're and talking I, about is Kajira of Gore. So this is the 19th in the Gore series. So this was written by John Norman. Um, and there are a total of, let me see how many, there's a lot of these books. There's a fuck lot. Mm, there's a lot, yeah. Yeah. So the first one was in 1966, the Tarns and, or the Tarnsmen of Gore. Um, and they, they kept going up until, again, the early 80s. And I think like they re- published some of them in the 2000s and these books are bananas popular like so it's a sword and planet book um and they're kind of like in addition to being science like science fantasy they're also like erotica and philosophy content they've also created this whole gorian subculture um which we'll talk about in a minute so john our guy, John Norman, his real name is John Lang, and he's actually a philosophy professor, and a lot of his philosophy kind of comes through in this book. Yeah, and I bet that there are a lot of female interns who did not go back <laughs> to be advised by John Norman. I'm just going to take a bet on that. I don't know. Was he good looking or not? Oh, let me, you know, I mean, he's, it's crazy. He's, he's still alive. He's like 89 now. Well, what I thought was very uh, interesting, but also like very telling is that I read um, quotes of his on why they stopped publishing them. And it's not because he wanted to stop writing them. He said, oh, it's because of the sad state of fantasy publishing at the time. Well, I know a good bit about the state of fantasy publishing at the time. Yes, there were fewer and fewer direct mass market uh, fantasy publishers. However, I'm pretty sure they quit publishing them because it just got to like weird, gross yeah. stroke books. <laughs> But he won't admit that, you know, and it's, um, I don't know, it's odd because I had never, I'd always heard of these books um, and I knew that they were like, you know, a little bit forbidden, but they were very much like a lot of the books that I, I was reading. Like I read a lot of fantasy and, um, you know, I was looking for sex, but the, the the early ones are just straight up like, like, like John Carter or, you know, if you want to like say like Anne McCaffrey um you know just kind of sword and planet just like adventure stuff and there's like slave girls in it but then it kind of got more and more that the slave girls kind of take the he looks pretty much like what you would think he looks like, like. <laughs> <laughs> he fits like whatever you're imagining that's what he looks like you know he's got that he's no, got that no, silver hair sure, so you know there's not a whole lot of pictures of him um he's yeah he's got that that he looks like I would think it was what I was picturing in my life. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. He kind of looks like, um, like Mike Pence and Steve yes. Chevy had another baby. He's like pervy Mike know. Pence. Good, hey? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Or if, you know what? I think maybe it was like, yeah, yeah he's like the healthier Mike Pence. Cause he, yeah, he has a dude, I, I can tell. I mean, you know, I've been to conferences. That man is going to grab your ass at that yeah. conference cocktail party. So, so is he like the ugly yeah. guy that learns to be really good at ropes so he can get women? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> uh, there's nothing else anybody else is going to give him a chance. But, oh, you're a really good rigger. Oh, yeah, <laughs> tiny. <laughs> Yeah, possibly. Yeah, so, right. Okay, and then I guess a little bit before we get into the book. So there is this Gorian sub subculture. It's a fandom based on the philosophy that he puts in these books, um, and it's kind of independent of his involvement. And it started as a fan network after publishing houses ceased printing the paperback editions. And again, like you were talking about, Sarah. Um, and the Gorian concepts, I'm going through the I'm very professional Wikipedia page. So Norman's philosophy is concerned with the order of nature in a universal context of power and subordination. The Gorian subculture particularly fo focuses on master and slave dynamic and 
sexual relationships associated forms of female submission as portrayed in the novel. Therefore, although they are estimated to compose less than 5% of the total female population on gore, training... Yeah, like, there's not a whole lot of these like, like slaves. Okay, um, it, but training and keeping a female slave or a kajira is central to the cor- Gorian subculture. Formal slave training, slave positions and commands, as well as slave attire and beautification are practiced central central in the Gorian subculture. So that's just kind of an overview of it. I don't know a whole lot about it. So see if anybody knows. Yeah, honey, why don't you give us kind of a rundown on how you feel that this like interacts with modern day um, dominant submission, BDSM okay, community Okay, so stuff. if you're talking about the modern day Korean subculture, it's probably, they would probably appreciate that I point out that some of them don't feel that they're part of the BDSM or kink community, that no, no, we're not like that. And I'm just like, and I sit there looking at it going, well, <clears throat> BDSM, you know, you know, dominant submission and everything, you're pretty much you're it what you think your shit don't stink or what but hey you know identify how you will self i'm not going to tell people how they can self-identify but yeah for some of them that's a a clear distinction Mm, i don't know but anyway um (laughs) yeah i don't see the clear distinction but that's how they identify so i'll respect that that's how they feel um so Then you got um, your traditional, well, not traditional, because there's so many different styles of domination and submission and everything. But basically, uh, the kink world, it's such a large umbrella term. There's so much involved (laughs) in it. Well, you can't really say, oh, it's this, because then you've left out. 80% 80% of people or whatever because it's so varied. But, um, yeah, so but one thing that you will find across the Gurian subculture and the um, BDSM kink communities, um, dominant submission, is consent. Consent is huge. Like, and so when people see things like Fifty Shades of Grey or 365 or whatever and go, oh, my God, that's BDSM, that's kink, I want to do that. No, no, that is not. That is abuse. <laughs> no no he goes and shoves a contract down on this poor girl that has no education no research no understanding here sign your rights away no 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 you don't involve anything anybody without them fully understanding like it's just like oh my god it's so wrong (laughs) anyway so um so yeah so what we do like there's different stages so or not stages, different oh, categories, ways, mm-hmm. people, personas, facets, whatever. I'm not fucking good with big words. <laughs> but anyway, so you could identify as a slave, a sub, a switch, a dom, um, all those sorts of things. And the, the thing is not only um, is there consent involved like before you like you pre-negotiate a dynamic you pre-negotiate a scene you negotiate limits what you can and can't do you negotiate safe words and um and even the difference between the definition of of a sub and a slave varies so much person to person mm-hmm. some people will see a slave as somebody who values the idea of being owned by another person some people whereas a, a sub is somebody that values the service to another person some people see that definition some people will see um the slave as a person that gives away more of their rights or doesn't have rights or that their pleasure doesn't matter so there's just so much variance there's no one definition except for the common thread through all of it is consent is key even if the person even if you believe and you and your partner have agreed that you cannot um tap out of a scene or whatever which i'm not a fan of i don't agree with i think you should always be able to tap out of a scene but even if that's what you've pre-negotiated then um you know, you still consented to that beforehand. You know, right. there's still that, that this is what you agreed and signed up for within the boundaries and limits and rules that you set. And this is why contracts um, are used by some people um, because not everybody uses contracts, but 
some for some people they really like that it's put down in black and white what the rules are so if someone person breaches the rules they can go here look here it is in black and white this is what we agreed you breached the rules that use this is what i agreed to you you're an abuser sort of thing um so yeah <sighs> what else would you like to know i'm sort of like there's just so much i'm like ah how do i get all this knowledge out into this little <laughs> yeah, it's amazing and I'm like I've already like I'm just like maybe this is I'm learning so much um <laughs> well I have a question um and I'm trying to think of how to phrase this in a way that does not sound like kink shaming because that's not my intention um obviously the sex parts and the slave parts of this mm -hmm. book are fantasy and and I don't think there's such a thing yeah. as like a dangerous fantasy the philosophy parts in this I think um, I'm uh, the only thing that concerns me is that I, you know, all the all the decent people are going to take this as all in good fun or all in good, you know, uh, yeah. like consensual fun. Like so much of the philosophy here, this kind of like almost like there was a golden age of men who were real men and a real woman would submit to them and glory in her submission. That sounds a lot like this incel, oh. <laughs> the kind of stuff that you hear from, yeah, yeah. like the nastier yeah. parts of the internet. So, like, what is your opinion about whether something, I don't even want to say, I mean, obviously, I'm a librarian. I would never, ever take this off the shelf. But, I mean, is there such a thing as a dangerous philosophy that underlies well, a kink, I guess? I think the importance is um, open communication and education. Because if you were just to read this book without any education, then yes, that could be dangerous but however the more we normalize talking about this and having these conversations the more opportunities people have to learn and understand this book in context that it is fantasy it's like if you know people are going oh my god kids are watching porn to learn how to make sex to have sex we've got to ban porn well no you don't got to ban porn porn actually is a useful resource that has its purpose Mm -hmm. um it's really about context what you need to be doing is educating kids that porn is fake that it's acting just like when you blow up a building in a movie you're not really blowing up a building the same as when you do stuff on porn they're not really doing what they're doing or there's all these safety measures that you aren't seeing off camera so um i think the more you try and shun something the more it goes underground, the less there's that conversation about it to educate people and it becomes more dangerous. It then has that forbidden vibe to it as well and then what's forbidden and taboo people crave and they look for. So does that make sense? Yes, perfectly, yeah. It does. Um, I, I do think that there is an appeal to this, like probably for some people, hopefully in a safe way, that um, I, I, it's almost like it's a secret knowledge that the protagonist gains, and we'll talk about the plot in a, in, a, in a minute, but that, like, she goes to Gore, and then she realizes, oh, that she's been wrong about life all this time, and that she's, you know, and and, and secret knowledges, the idea of them yeah. can be exciting, but they can also, you know, well, I just realized that probably in Australia, they don't have <laughs> QAnon, <laughs> but I'm sure you have your own conspiracy yeah. theories. <laughs> The same kind of like a, a frisson, I guess, of the same kind of yeah. excitement. One of my pet peeves about the philosophy behind this book is like when you're mentioning about the danger about women being submissive to men and that's their true nature and stuff like that, is there's just as many male submissives in real life as there are women submissives so this right. whole like being true men will no, actually no a lot of men are submissives and this whole toxic masculinity of like oh we've got to be true men is so harmful to the men that are submissive it's like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. no 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 you can't just slather across the one gender one expected norm no everybody's individuals and they're all, all in different places of the spectrum and when you stop respecting that is when people end up harmed you know because as much as our society tries to deny it our sexuality is an important part of our mental health and if we deny it and don't find healthy ways to express our sexuality then we end up in really fucked places mentally and in really fucked relationships oh you're just my favorite i love it what i think yeah. is really interesting 
just for no, I was just saying, no, I just, I love this, like, yeah, I love, it's so important, you know, sexual well-being is part of the all-around well-being, and people don't talk about it enough, and it just makes me happy to hear, so that's all (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) Let's all be happy. I only found that yesterday, and I wish I had found this out before, because I would have tried to track one down. It's kind of telling because like Norman talks this big game all throughout the book. Every time you give Tiffany two seconds to think, she's all like, oh, well, oh, my God, the Gorian man understands that a woman needs to be subjugated. But um, and choiceless. They say the word choiceless all the time. But then he wrote a sex manual for this. And his sex manual, I, I've not read it because I just found out about it yesterday. Um, and it doesn't evidently use a lot of the kind of um, the agreed upon terms from the BDSM community because it was written before that. But it's all about stuff like, um, you know, she pretends to be beaten and you're like clapping your hands. You know, in other words, it's like how to enjoy this as of a part of a a, a non right. um, he, he abusive does say sex in life. his like sex manual like his sex manual is very much like scene setup and like scenarios versus and it sounds like he kind of breaks from because some people in like the gorian subculture some people not all of them are all about the whole like the idea of total total slavery versus like he's like no there needs to be parameters there needs to be boundaries so i do think like obviously in the books it's very much this he, he does try to like say these books are very much in a fantasy element and his sex manual is more like practical real world applications. Just again, I haven't read it, but that's kind of the, the tone that it seems to have. Which I just, I, I just think that's fascinating that like, you know, he, he put this out, but then, you know, the, the funny thing is the, what it made me, I think a little bit uncomfortable about reading this book. And I feel like we're talking about the book and then we haven't actually <laughs> talked about the book, but, um, is that like it's, like it's like you're seeing more of him than he thought you were seeing necessarily like like you've gotten a little bit too more of a window into his brain than he <laughs> thought he was putting out there and it's kind of uncomfortable like he obviously i mean he was giving you his entire <laughs> spank book but but i don't know it's almost like somebody's standing in front of you in their underwear and then they turn around and they don't realize that they're missing the back or something <laughs> so so you're like you're, know, you're not sure how to behave also because could just be you're a place you're... for him to like just put it out there. Maybe we're maybe we're giving old John too hard of a time. Maybe he's like a perfectly like lovely man who you know isn't grabbing the role. Yeah, he just well, get it out. Thing, many this. of us have fantasies that we'd <laughs> yeah. never actually do in real life, and even if we got given the opportunity to do those fantasies in real life, we wouldn't enjoy them. Right. You know. It's, no, it's right. um, yeah. like fantasy books and like erotica like this is like porn. It gives you a chance to explore your sexual psyche and do all the taboo things and or not do but pretend, you know, right. and and everything without anybody getting hurt. So you can do all the taboo and the naughty and the few, but it's still safe in yeah. this because nobody's actually getting hurt. Yeah. And so um, I think there's value in that. Yeah. Sort of thing because it's once again finding that healthy way, that healthy outlet to express and explore your um, more extreme sexual desires without you know any harm coming to you or a person. And in real life, if that if we were confronted with that situation, it would be like, oh no, fuck no, this is wrong. Somebody's being hurt now. This is no longer okay. Yeah. Right. Well, you certainly mentioned in the um, the episode of your podcast that I listened to um, of um, finding ways to uh, express yeah. people's kinks safely. Like you mentioned, especially like, you know, crushing kinks, that you're never yeah. going to step yeah. on a kitten. Not going to do that, <laughs> no. <laughs> but there are ways right. to find that, you know, let people kind of get that 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 feeling without, um, yeah. you know, yeah, stepping exactly. on a kitten. So, yeah, if you explore the, the sexual, uh, the the psychology behind it the sexuality the experiences that might have led to that person developing this interest or how they feel there's all different ways that you can unpack that to sort of find this middle ground of still enjoying and exploring that without any person or animal getting harmed right Hmm. yeah so so do we want to actually tell people what happened in this book that we've been talking about now (laughs) for 30 minutes maybe we'll let them in (laughs) Okay, so our book opens up with Tiffany. Tiffany, the perfume counter girl in New York. Um, 
the dumbest perfume counter oh girl that New York has to offer. Oh, yes. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm that all self-absorbed, you know, like, fuck me. Like, Tiffany, uh, Tiffany is her own number one fan. Like, Tiffany is her own hype person. Like, <laughs> I liked her way better when she was like, I think my figure is quite good. Yeah. I think I'm very beautiful. Then, like, later when she was like, so she's on the juice for your master. But okay, so Tiffany so is such a fucking encounter. And when, a mysterious person, a, a mysterious stranger comes up and he's he's giving her the eye and, you know, he's talking her up. And basically, he buys a $700 perfume bottle of perfume, gives it to her, and says, Hey, I want you to come to this address. And she's like, Okay. Um, <laughs> and I mean, she should have come ready, you know, but, knowing that she was there to fuck, like, right? But she's not. She's straight actually. up just model. She's just modeling. And I imagined it. But they keep talking about, wow, that is a really yeah. notable resemblance. And she yeah. knows this is yeah. none of this. <laughs> My goodness, you could really mistake her. Yeah, like, oh, no. She does not <laughs> catch on. Yeah, <laughs> she doesn't catch <laughs> <this outfit. laughs> she doesn't on or at least have some inkling of going, oh, I- that's fucking be weird. <laughs> Like I have said to y'all earlier. And then they continue to like... And like stop. I've said earlier, like... <laughs> like, so they sort of... My TV them. viewing has prepared me Sorry. for body double situations since I was like eight years old. I was watching like Big Business with the twins, but still kind of body doubles switcheroo. You know, I, I am ready at any moment for a moons over Parador where I have to assume the identity of a ruler and, you know, just do the best I can. I would have been on this in the jump. And hopefully, like in days, yeah, like, you'll like be a better jump, president. I was ready right? for this, um, but anyway, so yeah, Tiffany, like she she's doing the Sears and Roebuck modeling. Like I just imagined her, like <laughs> just yeah, in some high- these are clothes that are a size too small. Don't forget, you're like, oh my god, they they're too small. Yes, they're, they're <laughs> small, and everybody, yeah, like as she's doing it, they're like the resemblance is like you y'all said uncanny, and she's like, huh. I wonder what they're talking about. And then it was like, oh, camera, shiny object, you know. <laughs> but even, even then, even before the rest of it, they're already kind of doing, like, like a shit test, what a, yeah. what a pickup artist would say. Like they're making, they're at, they're telling her to do things and seeing if she does them. And she doesn't get that either. Oh my gosh. she is a they, dumb fuck. We're like, here's some money. We'll be in contact. And they just kept sending her money. And she's like, oh, money, you know, um, which hey good for her i'd be like oh money too but it they end up coming to her apartment and it's like it's gross actually yeah it's, it's a, that i found alarming mm-hmm. actually that that whole bit they came in they snuck in when she was in the shower and like they they're obviously like they're shit testing her further they're like you kneel you know, and she's yeah, just like, like okay. you know, instead of like any normal person be like, what the fuck? And, you know, and it's even not, those of us that have been through trauma and sort of stuff that don't have that instinctive flight sort yeah. of thing, um, protection mode, we have the whole like, let's placate them and keep the convers- the situation calm so I don't get harmed. Even those people like that would be like, this situation is fucked. I'm going to keep them calm, but I'm going to edge towards the door. I am not going to fucking kneel. Like, what the fuck, Tiffany? She's not scared she makes at all. Coffee. She drinks from the bowl in a certain way, and she's like, huh. She's like, she's just kind of like, what's what this in your box to in the middle of the floor? And he's like, that's where we keep valuable things. And she's like, oh, is it for me? And he's like, yeah, but not the way you think. <laughs> yeah and so essentially like these guys you know she's in a towel they go from being mildly creepy to super creepy and like they had been kind of like hiding their they've been like putting on a yeah. few little courtesies um but then now they're like no nah, no nah, yeah. fuck this let's go full gorian and then guess what? Yeah. She gets taken After to a second location. Like, ball, like she gets gagged and like tied up and shoved in this t- tiny box. But she's yeah. And if you had any questions about like what this is all about, like the gag yeah. is so specifically described 
and the box is so like that you could make your own. Like he understands oh, his yeah. audience here, right? Exactly how the box fits together and how the ring and all, all this stuff. Like this is this this is this is his bread and butter, right? And there's people. I'm mean, obviously there 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 are people who really well, really enjoy. Well, the well there's those of us of like you know when we're talking about the reality of like oh like like she'd fucking kneel or make him coffee or whatever. You know, there's those of us that do practice this sort of like kink play and everything with gags that would go oh well you know if they did that to me i'd just get out of the gag this way or i'd just do this and i suppose you know he stops that by he's going no no you would not be fucking getting out of that gag it's this particular type of gag and that bitch is fucked (laughs) yes (laughs) <laughs> he wants to make it very clear like there's a ring that yeah. the gag is attached to and everything that like you know it's it's so super specific this is clearly no longer just a book you find in the fantasy section of walden yeah. books it's this her, is now a fuck book homegirl, she, he gives her an, like an injection <laughs> homegirl wakes up sometime later just like obviously not on earth anymore and I mean, she asks questions but she really asks questions like you ask questions about like somebody throwing you a surprise birthday party and you don't want to know that much about it. Like, <laughs> like, like she's yes. just like, like there's no, Hey, I've got real concerns here. You know, <laughs> like, oh. and I mean, there's, another, there's a slave um, and her name is Susan because hilariously, all of the other slaves, either from earth or otherwise, Many of them have Earth names, but they're all like your grandma's names. <laughs> like it's like a Mabel. Oh, Gertrude, you <laughs> sexy sex slave, you. <laughs> Come here, Debbie. Susan. Yeah, like Susan. you go through these as the uh, book goes on. You get these guys with insane, like pseudo classical names, like Plutonius, and then it's like Debbie, his slave girl. <laughs> like, come on! Man. Yes. You gotta come on. Yeah, yeah. Debbie's sucking you off, but Latonius owns you. I mean, it's it's yeah, crazy. So, all right, but yeah. So, she- so okay. What this bit after all this time? What she finally takes out of this is that she is the Tatrix of what Corsairs. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to pronounce this made up name. Like the ruler, the queen of a city. She asks no questions she does not about automatically this whatsoever. Assume body double like, because I really. would automatically assume body double. That would be my first thing. I'd be like, "Oh, it's a body double situation." Right. Okay, I got it. Like, yeah, yeah. Because I have no idea what Tatrix, of course, the rest actually is. So I must be here to be somebody's yeah. fucking passing. Like, fuck, how dumb could she be? <laughs> Perfectly. Like, oh, my my job as the perfume like. My work in perfumes has obviously given me the experience to be a political leader of a fairly large city on a completely different planet. So. To be fair, she is very distracted because she keeps seeing these slaves yeah. and getting wet <laughs> as hell. <laughs> She's I mean, she, she'll, she'll like see a whip and then eight pages of <laughs> philosophy later. Yeah, she is. <laughs> I want to kiss it. Don't let anybody see me touching the slave ring at the bottom oh my of my God. bed. Yeah. So she's very down, like, because again, they're in this society where there there are some men slaves. We don't really get into that. I can't really that. touch into on it much in this and book at all. Yeah, I wanted to know more about them, but um, there's you know, again, roughly five percent of it. One of her books is evidently like there's three books that are about a guy who's a gladiator slave and he works his way up from there to be like a you know king of everybody what? and probably buy all the bitches. I will read that book. Like, <laughs> that's, is, that's is that really yeah. a book? Like, yeah, there, there is. A, I there bet is a male had, like, book where, yeah, they train a male slave and everything and stuff, but it still doesn't go anywhere near into much of mm-hmm. the. The training of the male slaves as it does with the female, the training of the female slaves. And surprise, surprise, male <laughs> slaves are rewarded with being given female slaves. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Or the female slaves are being punished by being thrown to the male slaves who are also being punished. Do the male like slaves whole, juice as well? The whole thing. <laughs> well, no, I, I can't say they use that word. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. All I can think of is like you know my really good lemon oh, squeezer. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> he ends up. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the guy. There's like it's a, it's yeah. not Longinus. Um, it's got an extra I in it. 
Oh no, you mean the Drusus guy? Like she gets a bodyguard and she, she wants to be his slave that real bad. Deke. Like that guy shows up. They spend about, I guess it's probably like 15 minutes on the wall of like um, the city wall, but it was like a hundred pages with her like thirsting for his body, wanting to be a slave. He obviously had some slave bracelets that he was seriously thinking yeah. about abducting her by t- par- t- pterodactyl. I cannot believe I just put the T. It's because I was thinking Tarn, which is what the animal is called. <laughs> um, he's not a stealer, but he doesn't do it. <laughs> Yes. So she's a free woman. But everybody says you look like a slave. Because slaves yeah, yeah, look like a yeah. thing. Yeah. It's all them titties. It's like, this is another thing that gets me, you know, oh, you know, slaves look like a certain way. Like, no, genetics, bitch. Like, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. <laughs> slave curves. No, I think it's more that their culture will take any excuse mm. to, to enslave a woman. Because, like, they make that very clear throughout mm. the course of this book. Like, we're going to war, we're going to enslave these women. Uh, we found a woman going through our garbage, we're going to enslave these women. I mean, like, any woman that you find, it's exactly, like, actually kind of terrifyingly, like, um, you know, in in America, if you were a free person of color and you did not have your papers on you, or even if you did, mm. it doesn't yeah. matter, yeah. you know? So I, I, I did find all that kind of a distressing element, even though I was trying to think of yeah, it. Yeah, everybody in this book is super DTF, though, right? Yeah. They're like, they are horny as shit. Women, all women are really fucking horny unless you're a certain free woman and then you're frigid. And yeah, yeah, pretty much. Because even the like, when it talks about one slave that didn't, you know, that rebelled a bit, as soon as she was put in a place, that it, then then all of a sudden she loves her master and she's his for life and rah, 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 yeah. rah you know. And then she becomes. Yeah. And that is both, like the ugliest and the fattest slave, the a, a person, entire person that you see through this whole thing. And she's just like a little bit homely and kind of like just built a little but she gets like, and gets big bone girl. Like it's like it, it becomes like the '80s makeover scene or the '90s where like you know she gets whipped and they take off her glasses and she becomes super hot. Like yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, and the big question is, you don't see anybody, male or female, over, let's say, 50. You don't see any female yeah. over... You never know what happens. Okay, 35. so, all right. So, the book, the book, she is now, she goes from being <laughs> Tiffany Collins of New York to being Sheila the Tatrix. Tatrix, Tatrix, Tatrix. And... I could never figure it out. I guess Tatrix sounds a little living more... Living the life. Man. She, again, she's horny for slaves, but she is basically doing whatever this guy whose name has the extra eye in it we don't know how to say it yeah, um, yeah. longininess probably anyway yeah. so it doesn't matter so she's None like you know matter. basically you know she's ruling court she's passing judgment on people there's one guy sepsius that she finds gross because he's shearing slaves heads and like slaves hair can be used for like as napkins and yeah. Like he's passing it off as free women's hair, and he's like, yeah. he's cheating like silver and stuff like that. So he's he's he comes a, an in objectively a bad so, person. The, she meets this guy. Like, there's one normal named guy, Miles, in the mix of all the guys. Got- Thank God for one at least. <laughs> Miles of our dungeon, but he has to yeah. take his dick energy. Yeah, we're saying, book. honey. Yeah, Miles. <laughs> we're- yeah. yeah, I was just saying. Thank goodness, one normal name we can actually pronounce. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. and remember so her and miles who's from a, another city that they're warring with or another kingdom or another yeah argento i wonder what their <laughs> so, major anyway, export is he basically has a confrontation with her you know insults her and she comes to find out like they're like her the her "Quote unquote advisors because she doesn't know she's a body double are like oh it's all fine we're at war with them but they're like way far away oh yeah they're still way far away oh don't worry about it yeah we're we're good we're good we're good until like she almost crashes on honestly because she's like okay so we want a yeah. major victory a hundred miles away and we want a major victory the next week fifty so, miles away but she's not quite everyone enough else to has figured out and- except for our girl Tiffany slash Sheila because she gets fifty names in this thing. She yes, guy with the extra eye, Legends or whatever, is in love with the real Sheila, and so he to make sure that she does not get hurt because they're losing this fucking war. He gets the body double to take the fall for when they finally get sacked, 
And because the problem for Tiffany is that Sheila is, oh, I'm going to use your word, honey. It's <laughs> yeah. <is> a cunt. <laughs> She is a nasty, nasty piece of work, and the people hate her, and the people are ready to barbecue yeah. her. You know, I mean, what, if this goes yeah. south, they she want to impale her ass with a spear. Mm, literally. <laughs> I'm a little surprised nobody got impaled. I was kind I mean, of. People got impaled, Sarah. Forward ah, to the they impaled. just didn't get impaled. So. <laughs> I know. I mean, if you're going to go, yeah, go yeah, whole hog, all right? I wanna, sort of goes, I wanna, would they have gone into detail and would they have used accurate detail? You know, just. <laughs> I, I was kind of, okay, I I, I don't want to say I had a, I was kind of hoping that they would, but then I'm like, no, no, they wouldn't go into detail. It would be like a total, like, <laughs> blue ball cock block so, and tail it. So. You know, I'm, this is well nobody did. So Tiffany, like, and we're on like page 200 by now because all we really have is like Tiffany's inner dialogue about how horny the slaves make her. So she finally gets caught. She's in a gold cage and she's going to go get impaled on the spear. But this guy that she showed kindness to and we find out later are, are the hero from R. The, I think like, it's set Drusus, it up to where she can wrong. get away. And the girl is really good at sneaking around. Like, she sneaks out of the city. She, you know, she gets a... I really thought that this is where the plot was going to pick up because, okay, she's doing stuff. She has agency. Awesome. She's yeah, going to... She gets caught. Uh, um, <laughs> she does the most dumb she shit. shit. <laughs> and she, as little as she knows, she still knows enough about their culture by now to know she's for anybody of half a brain to go no you don't approach the bloody slave wagon for fucking help or whatever on the slave girls they hate free women what the fuck and there there is absolutely no commonality between slaves like they do they do not cover for each other they will not at all i mean like if, if you make it out like if you try to escape, which yeah. nobody would in this culture, because once you get enslaved, you get this like slave, slave orgasm. Once your slave um, or, like, fire like, they are not your friend. like that's it. Yeah, you slave bot. Yeah. The funniest thing is that after I finished this book, I started reading a Beverly Jenkins book, Indigo, which is about the Underground Railroad. And so then I was like, kind of, tr- kind of trying to imagine like abolitionist oh of gore. What would that look like? Like if if there was like a, a sack full of crazy people on Gore who were so outside the norm of Gorean culture, like what would an abolitionist culture of Gore look like? And my brain just kind of like <laughs> froze because I couldn't, <laughs> you know. But like, what would that be like? I I don't know. That somebody's probably written like a giant fanfic that is like runs to ten thousand pages by now. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so she Sorry, ends up um, yeah. Version. Like Honey said, she goes to these slave women for help, and they're like, get out of here, you free bitch. We don't need any of you. And so she gets picked up, and she gets put on this, like, block, and she can't read. They, they haven't, she, she now knows the language fluently, but she can't read. Um, well, we should mention, she did get no, she hasn't got nothing to business yet. She was a virgin. No, no she, she got taken really cool, by the, 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 the con man with the silver and the slave yeah, he, comes, he comes and claims her and says that's yeah. his slave. And, like, it's the one, like, the one thing I was like, that was the one guy that she was not down to fuck. Like, anybody else on this whole planet, she would have been oh, like, Lord. yes. Like, oh, every Lord. other dude we've had. Oh, my God. Yeah, sorry, I'm just real. It's like the ugly also thing coming through and everything going, I, you know, he's getting her back and everything for all the times yeah. he's been rejected in his life. You know, hey, fuck you, bitch. I might be the ugly one you didn't want to fuck, but I got you now. Exactly. Like, he's the yes. only ugly man in gore. The entire but he plant. sounds like, like she is like, so, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing, John Norman, John Lang. You talk about like basically filleting whips, but then when it comes down to the business, you don't give us the business. I was like, this son of a bitch is like, I was like, this I was so pissed off when, when she finally yeah. gets 
fudge. <laughs> there is nothing. We have heard at this point, I, I conservatively 200 pages about how a gory slave sits so that you can right. see essentially her labia, how like she shows off her breast to best advantage, how like all this business. And then she finally fucks somebody. And there is, I am not kidding. It's, a yeah. goddamn. Like, this man can write all about the woman's body, but like, he's not going to tell us about a dick. And I resent that. <laughs> Yes. And so, but, I mean, my, my first thought was, okay, well, maybe it's because, A, he wanted to keep, like, you know, getting published by, like, regular fantasy publishers. But then I'm like, how much have I read from, like, Anne yeah. McCaffrey? Yeah. There's some dicking in that. B, it's kind of like that whole, like, you know, maybe the more interesting thing to him is not the actual intercourse, but rather the spanking and the, all yeah. that. I don't know. It is I was furious. And like, After I guess there should be a question for Honey because, like, I mean, I, again, I don't really know a whole lot about like the culture. I mean, I do know, like, you know, like with like Dom sub relationships. I mean, it's sexual, obviously, but I don't know how much of it's like penetrative. And like, I don't know if it's like, you know what I'm saying? Well, like, yeah, ahead. and and it doesn't have to be sexual. Oh, there is quite a lot of people that it's sex isn't part of it for them. So you can have a service submissive, which has got nothing to do with sex whatsoever. They just enjoy serving you. Um, and you can uh, have you have masochists that love being like impact play or or whatever, and it's got nothing to do with sex. They just enjoy that. So and that will just be the scene on its own just hurting them in whatever way and you know inflicting the pain or whatever and that's what they love yeah um so it can be you know um, without sex same with the um the little girl or daddy dom's dynamics that a lot of people get all up and dance about going oh my god it's incest and a lot of them aren't sexual at all it's a more about that nurturing and care sort of thing so yeah. it's yeah when you say that the sex might not be a thing for him at all. Um, that's quite actually, you're probably on point, actually. Hmm. Well, for me, I was like, damn, I was like, I wanted it. It's so, it's so like, you actually had to read between the lines for the rest of this, now that she's actually having sex, to figure out, like, was it doggy? It's mostly not, which I thought was very interesting. You would think that these people would fuck yeah. their slaves doggy <laughs> style, but they don't. <laughs> it is mostly oddly. But, I mean, you have to, like, yeah. really, really parse it. Like, to see, like, what's going on in these sexual encounters when otherwise, I mean, I, I know more about how to be a good Gorian pleasure slave than I know about <laughs> most sports. Well, I feel like what ends up happening, because she gets, like, you know, she gets passed around kind of from slave owner to slave owner. I feel like what happens is, like, her whole existence when she's not, like, straight up banging a dude is, like, just being edged the entire time. Like, I feel like she's always, like... Mm -hmm on the cusp of an orgasm and so like it's when they finally touch her it's like it can explode but i feel like that's the whole like life of a you know being the slave girl is basically just being edged your whole existence like she yeah, even yeah, being, her kennels like being edged like and having a dom that's into orgasm denial <laughs> yeah it's just like ah yeah <laughs> fuck me fuck me touch me touch me please please, please i'm making you kill me i'm going insane yeah, that was kind of what it was. But the crazy thing is that when we say this, that's not just for that's not just for fuck slaves. That's for like the people who work the <laughs> looms at the mill. You're yeah. Like what the hell kind of fabric are these people turning out? Damn. Damn. I think it is like you're talking about. Oh, go ahead. I was yeah. going to say, you notice their kennels that they get put on at night, that they're all locked up individually, so they can't even, like, you know, fuck each other to get off. No, no, no. We are going to keep these women so they're so sex craved the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> or even... Yeah, I really think that a more interesting uh, sex-positive gore would have had a yeah. lot of lesbian Ooh. fucking... But he goes into details right. so that saying without you read between the lines that no, they can't do that. They can't have that release or whatever or right. find other ways to do it or anything. And there, I mean, he never says that. There's no way they're allowed to masturbate. They can't even like, and even like, like, not even from like a sexual standpoint, but like they can't even like soothe each other. Like there's no like, you know, like they can't be in a kennel and just like self soothe with like their friend or whatever, you know, like. Yeah, they can't. Have oh, yeah. A puppy pile. Yeah, they can't even. 
They're really yeah, denied really. Uh, human contact. Like it's yeah, it, yeah like it, cruel it, slavery. It really is, and you literally start going insane without human touch. So, um, I don't know how sane they'd end up after a few while of that. <laughs> yeah, and like so, Tiffany again. Tiffany, she she gets bought. Well, she goes. The sepsiest guy is the one that like breaches her, and then you know he. Keeps no, actually, it's the wagon but guys is, who. Yeah. Um, so, no, I think. Wait, now I'm not sure. I thought it was no, the gross the guy because she was. Yeah, the well, gross guy. Guy. You're the right. Gross it is the gross guy. Guy. one fucker. Yeah, and yeah, he has some, she has some gumption still. Like she escapes from that guy, and then she is so yeah. sad about it later because he didn't. He didn't treat him like a true yeah, master. So, I, I yeah, forgot about that. He's cut her hair. <laughs> And so, like, she's not at full hotness anymore. Um, and, and because of that, she gets bought by, like, this guy who has a mill. And she works in the mill. But even though she's only got part of her hair, she's still hotter than the rest of the mill girls. And her and this other girl, Emily, are sold to become, like, she gets put into, like, she gets put into slave school, essentially. Which is, like, summer school, but less zany. Um well, this dude yeah. has like a good yeah. entrepreneur idea. Um, like he wants to do like feast slaves. Yeah. Like, so you just buy one package, like for your wedding. It's <laughs> like what the fuck the Gorian wedding like, looks he's like? Don't company. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So like yeah. dancers and fuck slaves and like um, you know that kind of thing, and you just buy you know you go to one place and it all fits, yeah. which is a great business idea. So and and so like sends her and all because the idea yeah. is you buy low and sell high, right? So you buy mill slaves, the hottest ones, and you train yeah. them. It is a good business idea. So we get to see through her perspective, right. like, the whole and like slave earlier in the book, she had thing. made um, Drusus, her bodyguard, take her to like a slave school because she's again she's been fascinated with it from the jump, um, and then she ends up working for this like guy who has a fe- you know like she does the feast and then the the like the 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 slave hunter comes and it's that seems very harrowing like he i kind of well okay the scene where, where where they're actually hunting who she thinks is yeah. her but of course is the other sheila that's harrowing the scene where they make her go to the slave hunter who is just extreme like it, it was not clear to me i was a little concerned there may be an ethnic thing the other guy the party was for yeah. was quote unquote yeah, oriental the first time race um, is mentioned in the book yes yes it is like he does say in the very beginning she says most of the slaves were white there were a few black ones and one that she thought was asian and i like of yeah. course i like made, made a mental note of that because usually in this kind of weird like sword and planet exoticized setting yeah, they make everybody a big deal chic, out of everybody's race. like so the, the everybody is the yeah. less scary brown like you know the acceptable brown essentially but this guy was clearly different in many ways so i'm not oh, sure if it was supposed to be racialized or not but um she was afraid of him and he, I don't know, I kind of yeah he's he sitting that. there having like a meeting <laughs> talking about who he's like slave hunting and then he just like throws her on the table and just starts, you know, raw dog in her. <laughs> that must be so perfect. I need a yeah. signature on this document. Um. <laughs> like, can your secretary call me in the morning or should I, are you, I mean, how long should I wait? These are really okay. good at, like, I feel like they're I mean, really good at, like, multitasking because they're, like, straight up banging and, like, having conversations. It's, it's kind of amazing. <laughs> Yeah. You haven't done that. It must be a terrible. <laughs> you haven't answered the phone during sex and getting banged. Going, oh yeah, yeah. Business. It's time for business. You know. Well, it's kind of like when my mother would be yelling at me when I was a child, and then like the phone would yeah. ring and she would pick it up. Hello. <laughs> business time. Yeah, it's time twice. for business. You don't know what's going on back here. Um. So she ends up having like really amazing <laughs> sex with that guy. Um, it was I was like, all right, I'm here for that. And then, but still not described. Uh, yeah, she just enjoys it. Yeah, no, her, she she yielded. She had her slave yeah. yielding, which is an orgasm. I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's like a special orgasm, I think. An orgasm yeah. you can only it's get like, once your slave. Yeah, fires so far it. we have juicing, slave fires, and yielding. Um. No, but my favorite thing in the the book that only happened one time is, okay, so in the very beginning, she's talking to Susan, and I think it's when, like, that, like, 
what was his name? Mark or whatever comes in. And um and he said something about how like um oh yeah I yeah uh-huh, I can tell and 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 Tiffany asked her what is that and she's like that's the oil oh yes the oil submission <laughs> and I about died laughing at that like how often do you got to get that changed and is that like a thirty thousand <laughs> yeah. mile thing or uh, uh, me actually think of when you're milking a man so why um some subs when you have them um in chastity and you it's not healthy for a guy not to come. It actually increases their risk of prostate can- cancer. This is a thing like with all these um, uh, religions that encourage chastity and uh, not to masturbate and all those sorts of things. It's actually really bad for guys' physical health yeah. not to come. So, um, so when we keep them in chastity long term, we actually milk them, which we train them to have their prostate stimulated and so they ejaculate the prostate fluid but they don't actually get to orgasm and so you know this whole changing like you know the oils of submission and everything it makes me think of that when you're milking a guy just for his health like oh yeah right time to change the oil change time for you to have your milking and you know for the mother's sake well just in general, i'm gonna need like this is like a man this is wildly you know. fascinating to me. I need to know more about this. Hold on, Sarah. Like, I need to know about this. Like, <laughs> okay. like I need, I, I, I'm going to ha- have follow up questions. Like, how they can be milked but not have an or like, yeah, because that's how do you like, how does that happen? Like, sorry. I, well, we, we can talk the, about that. You know, where the, you know where the prostate is, yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, and you talk about, you know, all the jokes and everything we see on movies when guys are going to have their prostate examination at the doctor and, oh, it feels good, you know, right. sort of thing. So um, you can, there's prostate fluid and then there's sperm and they're two different fluids that mix together when you ejaculate. And so you're stimulating the prostate to get rid of like for so the expels its fluid but you're not stimulating an orgasm for the sperm to be released i did i'm I'm learning things that's wildly (laughs) fascinating thank you okay so oils of submission we'll just think about it as prostate milking so (laughs) like more which is funny i wonder if it's like a male anxiety thing because okay yeah a woman can get wet as hell and you can't tell from standing too feet away from her yeah i mean if she's in these tiny tunics these slave tunics and kneeling you know <laughs> i mean you almost have to be like pushing your whole business against the floor and leaving a print to for people to actually be able to see like not like all up in your business but farther away I, just, you know, I wonder if it's part because like you know a man of course his arousal is so much more obvious visually yeah. and they do you know they leak they're like you know in many ways messier i wonder if that's a man like oh what if you could tell the same way looking at a woman that you could tell looking at a man i Ooh, feel like they have like yeah i feel like the floors and gore are all marble so it's you know more <laughs> and you gotta they have invented spray nozzles on hoses <laughs> it, it's like those um <laughs> kink clubs you hear about in Germany where they like scat play and piss play and everything is all okay there and everything and at the end of each night they just hose down the whole club <laughs> yeah that's the, like it has to be like that that's the unsexy slave's job is to go and like just take a bucket and like have to clean up after everybody you turn 35 and that's it for you yeah you don't even have a name or you an the like, 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 you number like, they don't even mention that you exist. They don't see you. Like, they yeah. train their brain not to see you. And that's why nobody's over 35. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't know where They're just on jizz duty. <laughs> um, well, they do get sent off to the slave pens for the breeding pens at, at some point. Well, okay. So, like, that's another question I have. <laughs> what happens to these, like, okay, so can the, like, if a slave, if a slave master and his, like, love slave have a kid, what, what happens to that kid? Like, that kid is definitely enslaved. Yeah, that kid's enslaved. Yeah. Uh, because it's clear in Gorian culture, you don't go back. Like, right. you know, there's only a downward slope to slavery. There is no, there's no reversing. Ugh. And they don't really describe it well in this book, but the slave tea that they talk about her having, the drinking, the slave uh-huh. tea's actually got their contraceptive in it, so they ah. give that to slaves to stop them from falling pregnant. 
<laughs> yeah, I figured that that was what it was about, and because it, it was so convenient, that it's like, well, it really lasts the rest of your life, but just be like virtually give it to you once. Uh, and oh, the dude was just stroking it. You could tell by like. If you need help drinking it, it's usually a two man job. One holds your hair and <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah. Like you, you could you you could you could you could feel the um the the fantasy sometimes comes very far to the, the fore in this book and that was one place where it did. All right. So anyway, um so, yeah, okay. she she where are we now? Like she, So our girl took me. submission Miles has come to, you know, from Yes. <laughs> yeah. We were talking oh, about caught, the, another Sheila. Yes, yeah, so they, they, they caught the second Sheila. Sheila. Sheila too gets caught. It's actually this big adventure, scene, uh, like um, this this like kind of running around the city scene. It was very it's harrowing. Right. Yeah. So it's just getting it. tracked by Sling, which basically their version is sniffer jo- dogs. Yes, but they're actually not tracking tracking her. They're actually tracking the other Sheila. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And that's when she found her. Yeah. 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 We are now 75% through the book, and this is when she finally realizes that it was a body double situation. That's no, when uh, <laughs> we were not 75% of the way through the book because I was so relieved to find out that this is one of those Kindle books where the last 20% is previews for the other book. Anyway, so, I thought we were recording yesterday, and I was like, I only have a couple hours left. And if this bitch keeps talking about how much she wants to be enslaved, it is taking a long time to read that. So it's a good portion through the book. So she, you yeah, know, it's a long yeah. one. So like she, the other Sheila gets caught by the Hassan, the guy that our Tiffany, Tiffany slash Sheila slash Tiffany. Lita also, I think. Lita becomes, yeah, like that's um the guy that she just banged on the table, like while he was doing business. Um, He's he doing kept, business. He catches the real Tiffany and she's like, Phew, my troubles are over, you know? <laughs> like, oh. but they're not. And she is having a good time as the fee slave. Like, she's one of the best ones. She's got her slave friends. Um, they're all loving their kennel. Everything's great. And then, and then, Miles and Drusus show up. And well, no, she was sent all the way to this other city, the one where she was going to be impaled. To Ooh. our, I think, or our, no, to our Gentum. Um, and, and it's been like a month, so she thought she was in the clear. She thought she yeah. was safe. Um, well, she's still and working for the feast slaves. She's still working for the feast slaves, though. Yeah, but then who, who, who is it who, um, who brought her? Like, oh, it's Le- 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 Jurya, you U.S. or whatever. And he has no chill at all about her whatsoever. Yeah. He is an asshole. Well, no, she gets bought, but yeah, she gets bought. Ugh. Hold on. Honey, if you remember. Like, I think she ends yeah, up. Miles Biser. Yeah, Miles Biser. That's right, Miles Biser. And Miles <laughs> is sure that she's the real Sheila because she actually is the Sheila that he saw. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I never forget a, I guess, the oils of a submission. So he got <laughs> her. Her name becomes Sheila again. And, you know, he gives her the business. He's amazing. He's got the biggest dick energy in this book. Um, and so, but he takes her back to the castle because there's going to be like, back to our main castle. I'm just going to call it castle because of what the fuck. But like, so there's going to be a, tri- they have now two Sheilas and there, there's going to be basically the big Scooby-Doo unveiling of who is what. And but the then- funny thing is in this world, they would just impale them both. <laughs> well so the night before the big like unveiling Ligerius or whatever his name is like comes and grabs her and he's like I'm in love with the real Sheila so I'm gonna switch you guys again um so he switches them but then Drusus comes around and he's like well I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna he he thinks he knows that I know that he knows but I know that he knows it becomes that thing so she gets switched again there's a triple and this is literally when she actually figures out what happened yeah all of this it took all of this and she was like was I a body double <laughs> and yeah, she chill <laughs> so like she, she lets it slip that she's in love with Drusus. Oh my gosh, like, she calls Sheila. Her, I just sorry. What did she call herself like, like, like I, I'm probably not like, even yeah. an accurate Aussie stereotype. That Sheila's like a generic name. 
Yeah, yeah, Sheila's. <laughs> I thought it was an interesting term, you know, because, you know, Sheila's, you know, part of the Aussie cultural stereotypes. So, yeah. <laughs> that just occurred to me. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this big courtroom unveiling. Um, and they both like, um, like both of them have left clothes, of course, behind in the palace. So both of them, different fleen will go to each of them. Yeah. Sorry, my, if, if there's, if y'all hear my beagle is making insane noises. So <laughs> everybody enjoy that. Yeah, my crazy dog. You I'm thought you were just slurping your wine. Yeah. <laughs> No, she she heard Sleen and she wanted everybody to have like an, a good oral representation of what the Sleen sounds like. So let like, oh, me make these gross old dog noises. Um, so there's this big old like like courtroom thing. Yeah, and essentially what 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 they end up with is that they they come at the real truth, which is that like weirdly there's this whole priest kings versus beasts of gore, and most of the people there aren't even like of the level to understand any of this. But the yeah, so it's what what it was. But yet Hassan, the big dick energy slave hunter, um, is like, okay, where's my fucking money? And then bring him his fucking money. And then he does like this. I this is actually I, I, I was digging this. He was like, all right, everybody see that this is my money. Guess what? I'm taking this bitch instead. You can't impale her. She's mine. And everybody was like, that's amazing. And they just get to go home. Yeah. <laughs> He's in love with she like, okay, so if our Tiffany, if we have Tiffany Sheila, he really enjoys the other Sheila as his slave. So, you know, she's and she like that's her that is her master. She has learned the pleasures of being a slave. Her slave fires are lit. She is there for it. So they go on their merry way. Ligerius somehow gets away with all of this. Like he's doing late. He had like a safe passage agreement with the Argentum people. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. Just, yeah. So they can't in all honor keep him. So like nobody gets impaled. Nobody fucking gets impaled. They no. had the impalement stake ready. It's like there's a gun on the fucking mantle. It's Chekhov's impalement stake. But and nobody gets <laughs> And then but, like, and what I thought was really, really nice touch is like Ligerius, whatever his fucking name is. Yeah, you know, after him double crossing everybody, he turned out to be like, you know, lousy lion sleaze to everybody, and that he had tricked the city that give him the safer passage, like yeah. safe rider passage. The night before he goes, they send him both the Sheilas to you. And it's just like, yeah, he's like, yeah, he gets to like exercise his Sheila issue. Yeah. But what I think is interesting is that obviously his character flaw in this book is not that he is a traitor, not that he's a turncoat. His, his character flaw in this is that he allowed himself to fall in love and be ensnared by this free woman. Yeah. Yeah. His problem. But then he and does he say, labor and fuck her and get it out of his Sarah, He does say, like, at the, like, at the end, he's like, well, I realize now. He's like, oh, it was just infatuation. I got to have sex with her. And, like, I realized she's just a dumb slave. So it is interesting because he was obsessed with her. And then he had her. And he was like, eh, it's cool now. You know, like, not the greatest. But, um. But that is kind of real life, though, in a way. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> Girl. <laughs> I mean that, that, that can't happen, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, and they just like let our, they let our they let Tiffany go because they're like, well, you're the dumbest one, and she's like, yeah, can't can't argue that. Um, <laughs> this woman is clearly not smart enough to be the tantrics of Corsairus. She is, like, oh, yeah, yeah, she's really not. So she ends up being purchased by Drusus, and I was like, finally, here we go, and then like. It's sort of hot, and then it gets kind of upsetting because, like, he, like, it's not sexy. It's like he kicks the shit out of her and, like, slaps her in the face really hard. Mm. Like, like, he cannot forgive her for um, making him feel certain ways back yeah. when mm. were. Yeah, once and again, because it's so unmanly to love a woman and, you know, and, yeah. and want to adore her and all those sorts of things. Yeah. Oh, my God. Can't be having that shit. God, get he's, it. Gotta, like, he's gotta get it out, right? Yeah. yeah. Gotta, like, get on possibly possibly yeah. Yeah, and so, like, he, like, you know, she keeps telling him that she loves him, and he's not, he just doesn't believe it, and, like, I mean, they finally fuck it out, and, like, you know, I guess they end up as happy as they can with her as... happily ever after in the Gorian sense. <laughs> yeah, like, 
But I will say, like, all of our, like, the slave ladies that we meet all, they all end up with the dudes that they like. So Emily yeah. ends up with, like, the one guy that she likes. Susan and Miles are whatever, paired off, I guess, you know. Yeah, they're happy. Yeah. Because so, yeah, she talks about how he's actually, she can tell that he's actually honestly fond of Susan and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And, I mean, so. she was juicing for him hard. <laughs> even, like, yeah. even. Yeah, so like all of our the even, slaves even that we get to know end that. up with like a dude. That yeah, so it is, I think that technically it must be a romance novel because it does have a happily ever after. Yeah, even uh, until until she's thirty five, and then her old ass is getting shipped off to. <laughs> yeah, she's a sleeve. Yeah, she becomes as he gets back. Yeah. Brooding pens and then sleeve food. Yeah, like yeah. you know, it's. <laughs> Unless um, you're too ugly to breed, because you know, yeah, <laughs> got those broad <laughs> shoulders and stuff. There, um, there are like you know things that are similar that I can imagine where all the men in this, these powerful men, to get to where these powerful men were, would at least be in their sixties and seventies. Yeah, mm. you know, and here there are these virile young men. Mm. So maybe, maybe, maybe they like, don't have very long life expectancies on that planet. Oh, that could be it. Yeah, yeah, maybe Ooh, that could be. It. Maybe Ooh. they all die. That's what I'm saying. Maybe it's like Logan's Ooh. run and they all just descend. Like, yeah. Now kneel in the sand, facing the camera, said the man. Kneel back on your heels, place the palms on your hands, down on your thighs. Lift your head, put your shoulders back. Spread your knees. Excellent, said one of the men. Now assume the same position, said the man. But in your profile to the camera, your left side facing us. Keep your head up. Put your shoulders back more. Good, splendid. Splendid, said another man. Now face the camera on all fours, he said. Good. Now lift the head and crush your necks. Now start to kiss. More. More sensuality. Now close your eyes. Good. Splendid, said another man. Open your eyes now and unpurse your lips. And turn. And turn. Stay on all fours. So your left side is facing us. So you have your profile to the camera. I can play it. Now put your head down. Said. I did so. Splendid, said one of the men. Splendid, said another. I was keenly conscious of the radical submissiveness of this posture. I almost trembled with arousal. I dared not even think of the effect such a posture upon a woman if she had been pertinent by men who were truly power over her. He will do very nicely, I think, said the man. She will be ideal for our purposes, said another. You may get up, hey, Fanny, said the first man. I rose to my feet. I gathered the session was over. I was confident they were pleased. The fan, which had produced the surrogate of an ocean breeze, was turned off. The photographer began to extinguish his lights and put them to the side in a line against the wall. One of the men turned off the projector and the beach scene which had been projected behind me vanished. 
leaving in its place a featureless, opaque, white screen. You are very pretty, Tiffany and Miss Collins, said the first man. And you did very well. Thank you, I said. You may now change, he said. Very well, I said. I feared I might be being dismissed. I returned to the dressing room. Australian Bogan edition. If it had happened in Australia, here's how it would have gone down. Look, now all you got to do, face the camera, right? kneel on the sand, fucking heads up, shoulders back, stick your tits out, fucking spread your legs. Yeah, that's fucking it. Yeah, that's fucking nice, eh? That's fucking sweet. Now do it again, but side onto the camera. Yeah, fu- yeah, that's it. She's a fucking ripper, mate. Fucking, I've- that's it. Stick your tits out more. Yeah, now get on all fours. Fucking duck lips. Look, fucking just stick your duck lips out like like you're gonna kiss me. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, now yeah, fucking do it more sexy. Yeah, that's the way. Now we're talking. Fucking eyes. Now on all fours, side on. Yeah, sweet. That's it. Put your head down. Yep. All right. Look at this fucking cat. Put me on his fucking knees like I'm some fucking servant, bitch. Fuck him. What the fuck? He fucking thinks he's some fucking flash cunt. Fucking, you know, I'll get down here on my knees, kiss his fucking shoes. Fuck off. Well, I don't care if he's Hugh fucking head now, mate. I ain't fucking nobody's servant. Fucking make me a little wet though, eh? It's a bit fucking sexy. I'm a fucking, I'm not into it though, right? Nah, fucking nah. Nah, that's the other bitch, it's not me. You can get up now, Tiffany. Did bloody good, eh? Fucking nice job. Well, I guess we're done here then, eh? Fucking cancel on me, but I could tell. Nay, for a real fucking sexy bitch, eh? Fucking got all the moves. Can't stand off the fan now. It's fucking about time, dude. That cunt was fucking annoying, blowing in me fucking face like that. Turned off projector. Poxy ass cunts were all just like, put a projector of freaking beach up on the wall. It's just this scandy ass fucking wall acting like they're all these fucking flash studio photographer cunts. Fucking ain't got me fooled. I'm fucking out of here. I'm going home and over the beer. These cunts are fucked in the head. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do our questions and then we're going to ask some questions. So, yeah. okay. all right. Although these okay, questions so, are a little different with this. I think that, I, that, that we will have a harder time. Answering oh, yeah. some I think it's gonna, but we're going to give it a shot. Okay, big dick energy or big dick energy. So what this is, is like, is our main guy who I guess will make Drusus like, is he a dickhead or are you like, yeah, I'm kind of here for it. Or Miles, like we have so many guys in this. Well, we can... I think to be a Gorian man, you had to be both. Yeah. I think you can't be a true Gorian man, a, a true man of gore, where we have true men here. If you are not both big dick energy and a big dick. <laughs> and, and you mean as in like the <laughs> asshole type of big dick, yeah. not in the actual I have a nine inch yeah. cock. Yeah. I mean, in yeah. other words, I'm not sure because, of course, um, you know, we are literally across the planet from one another. Well, BDE, like Big Dick Energy, is like a dude who's not necessarily like an asshole, but he has like a, a real swagger to him, like a real confidence and mm. all. Whereas a yes, Big yes. Dick is just an asshole. Mm. Mm. So he does like not kidnap her and stuff like that, like he was going to. So, you know, we've got to give him some kudos for that. Yeah, she would have had a happier life though if he had just kidnapped her right there. Well, <laughs> you know? yeah. Or they would he, if he had kidnapped her and taken her back to his people, would she have been impaled? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. She could have been impaled, that's um, true. as opposed to which impaled. Is not a nice way to die. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, yeah, I, I think it is interesting because, I mean, again, all these guys in this are just like. <sighs> It's hard because it's, they're, I mean, nobody in this book is an actual real fucking like well-rounded person because like there's no, 
like with all of our men, it's all just, you know, having these like lady slaves. Like there's no, they don't like the, nobody's in touch with like their actual emotions. I mean, I guess Drusus sort of becomes that way. Well, it, you know, sense, and then, and then he's still, always doing his fucking yeah, panties. Whole, and I mean, the only development yeah. in characters is that she uh, she wants to be a slave, and then she understands that she should have always been a slave. Yeah, yeah. And she herself, as a person, is fucking beige. It's just like, oh gosh, if so I met her in real life, I, I wouldn't want to hang out. Right, like, like describe Tiffany. her, but don't use the word slave. You can't. There's this what part where he like? talks about her, and he talks about how intelligent she is, and I went, ha. Ah. <laughs> they, they got low standards on gore <laughs> I, like, I mean i guess it is interesting that she asks him like because you know because she can't read gorian she asked she keeps asking people about like writing and it is the one like i guess inkling of and i guess this would be more of a her question but like that she she asked him like can it, would he teach her to read you know like, I don't but know. But then, of course, he's like, slaves don't need to read, bitch. Well, no, but some so of them are like, maybe he'll indulge her. Maybe he won't, you know? Yeah. I don't know. So, it is interesting because I guess, like, the, 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 the dude that I think would be, like, the horniest making one is Miles in this book. Because, like, he seems the smartest. He seems very about his business. But also, like, his weird obsession with her as Sheila is kind of like, meh. So, I was going to juice him for that slave hunter. Oh, the slave hunter, Yes. Yeah, yeah, he seems pretty cool. Yeah. 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 He was a simple man with simple needs, right? Yeah, that's it. And you can't fuck with him and he's and he's he's smart in a street smart sort of way and life sort of way. Yeah. He was really more of a character than most of them were. Like I can I can tell you what he's like without using the word slave. Yeah. 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 All right, fair. Yeah, so I, I but I do think it's interesting that like um or telling or something that she keeps saying that like a master may pick a favorite slave, but yep. like not, not the, she never talks about love. You know, she never yeah. that the, the slave well, may no, love the master. Slaves try to find their love master. They yeah. do talk about the love master. She does say that she knows that he's in love with her, even if he doesn't realize it because of all the things that he tried to do. And then she tries to do that thing where like, she's, she tries to bluff him, you know, like, so yeah and he's not kidding when he says i could have sent you to the mines for that but like but here's the thing but like their last scene is very much like a typical female written romance novel where it's like she's doing the whole my love will like fulfill you my love will be the thing that like brings you around i will use my love and my let you use my body and abuse me to like come to the realization you know like it's very Got She's that. very confident in that whole last scene where I was not confident at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like that's just me in general. Like, I am never no, confident no, at all. Like, like, I'm always like, I am not confident at all, just in general. Um, <laughs> yeah, I really don't feel has the intelligence to gauge a situation. <laughs> Tiffany is going to be let off to her own impalement. Think she's going for lemonade. I mean, I don't trust Tiffany's uh, idea. But of what you got to give her like she is like where Tiffany as a free person is whatever her her slave knowledge is really good. So that's true. That's true. And I think that is kind of the point there yeah. is that um, that like her 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 intelligence as free was false, whereas his intelligence yeah. as a slave, which is all about the oils of submission, yeah. is true. Um, <laughs> all right, Sarah, everyone. question two. Would you talk shit yeah. with okay. or about the heroine? Fuck Tiffany. Oh, totally about. <laughs> about. Oh, my God. I was <laughs> her not, oh, my. This woman. <laughs> I just sprayed perfume in Tiffany's face. Like, I would have been <laughs> perfume bitch, like, plotting against her. I'd be like, hey, you guys from Gore, take that one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Like, for one thing, it's like when you sign up with the army, you got to negotiate a better deal for yourself. Oh, my God. You got to get that shit in writing with the recruiters. <laughs> so I do think, again, like, I felt like, and again, it'd be interesting because, you know, for you, honey, you read this when you were younger. Like, I felt like Tiffany is, I, I kind of found her just purposely one note because 
like I said, like I never minded all the things that happened because like I didn't see her as a person ever, which maybe is terrible on my part, but like she was so beige and so just I felt like she was just kind of like the narrator and was just like, well, this is how things are. So like it was like even though these things were being done to her, they weren't being done to a person, if that makes sense. Like I wasn't ever like, oh God, I'm worried for her safety because she was almost like a psychological construct. Like, yeah. Okay, you're uh, the trolley problem is like you're you're you know these yeah. people who aren't people. Yeah, and I'm not sure if that's sexist or if that's part of like. Okay, yeah. I haven't read any of Ayn Rand. Thank God, I'm far too old for that. <laughs> but um, you know, the people who are super into Atlas Shrugged and and like the Fountainhead, I'm guessing the characters in those are kind of like this. Like they're there to prance around to say things and to do things to 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 make a a psychological and philosophical point. Well, it's I imagine it's sort of like right with um porn and and sex work. We're told that with our branding and stuff, you know, to put our branding out there and keep to our branding and not really let too much of our real muddy personalities come through and everything, because you want to be this little template that somebody can put their fantasy onto and it work. But if you've got too much actual character or person, then that messes with their fantasy. It doesn't neatly slide in with that, what they're picturing on you. So maybe it's that sort of. Yeah. Thing, like, when you else. I think that's a really good example though. Yeah. Cause I felt like she was very much like, yeah. Cause I think this book, and we're going to talk about that later too. Like, I think this book was for, you know, anybody like I don't know who it was written for particularly but I think like if you were if this was something that appeals to you like you put yourself in there very easily because like how she writes herself she's got very limited like defining characteristics that's more just I mean again like we said we didn't find out that she was like blonde with blue eyes until you know we're almost finished with the book I felt like she was just kind of like yeah she was a placeholder was she written? It, was this written for men or for women? I say it's definitely written for men. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like the men's version of the romance novel, sort of thing. Yeah. Because I, if it were written for women, it would be different. Yeah. Like there's parts, and I, you know, I mean, uh, when I was a teenager, like when I when I was um, the, the age that you were when you read this, I would have been yeah. This I would have been fascinated by this, and I did read things that had like some of the elements of this, which I found extremely interesting and eroticized. Yeah, but yeah. as it goes on, like the first hundred pages, I was even like, "This is pretty titillating as an as an adult." Like, if I can kind of like you know turn my brain off and and miss all of this, like women are born to be submissive thing, just like yeah. the slave stuff. This is kind of hot. But then, yeah. like two hundred pages, three hundred pages, four hundred pages in. Shut up! Oh, no, but I think, but, I, <laughs> but, conversely, but but conversely, like I do, obviously think it's for men. But I think for people who maybe like, if you're a woman who like might be interested in being submissive, like it's probably yeah, right yeah, it's, in a different time. Yeah, 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 it's definitely yeah, still erotic for yeah for women that are submissive sort of thing or have a curious. It's, it what um yeah when we say that I read it when I was younger. So I was 15 when I first read this book. And um, it was what made me realize that I was kinky, but I didn't have the words or the language or the understanding because, you know, there yeah. wasn't the information out there for me. But I think I grew up on um, farms and uh, stations. So in America, you'd call them ranches, like those really fucking huge ass farms. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, where it's like 10,000 acres to one paddock. Um, so, and I was expected to work alongside the men from young and work just as hard and given no, I was treated no different for being a child or female. I was just one of the workers and treated exactly like the men. And then whenever I went into the rest of society, I would then like, you know, at school or anything, I'd then be treated like a girl and I wouldn't be accepted by the boys and the men as an equal I was just a girl I was never strong enough I was never this enough I was never that enough and I was constantly having to fight against that and go no 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 I am just as strong I am this I am that and it was just always this constant battle for equality and to be treated for the same and then to have read that book and had those reactions I was just like oh my fucking god no 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 and I freaked hardcore <laughs> realizing I had these desires inside me that was so 
opposite to everything that I was fighting for every day in my life, that I took all those urges and everything and I put them in a little mental box and shoved them up in the corner in the back of my brain and like <laughs> hit everything in front of it, whatever, anything I could to go, we never think of that again. It never happened. Oh, wow. That's so, but, okay, so this is written by a man and I think is written for men. Did yeah. you read at, now I don't know how old you are, but when I was this age, I also read Anne Rice's beauty books. Okay, yeah. And I mean, it's, it's kind of like a lot of the same ideas uh, from a, you know, for women from a woman. And um, yeah. a whole other ball of wax. And hot. <laughs> <laughs> So I wonder, you know, if, if you had that available to you. I got it from the library, <laughs> the library that I yeah. work at now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I haven't read those ones, so eh? because yeah, yeah, we didn't. Our library was really of, shitty stuff. They did read those because it was the kind of literary. You, if you said erotica, it wouldn't be in the library. So literary, I guess, fiction with an erotic bent um, <laughs> was available, and that you could get. You know, at the time we didn't have Fifty Shades and all, but but that was something with this kind of like power play dynamic that mm. was available. That was written for women by a women's, um, you know, by a female author. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's, it's an interesting like um a comparison. Mm. Yeah, it would be interesting. Yes, I might have to read them now. <laughs> well, the only okay, I read it so long ago, and I bet I, you know, I would probably bet money that I was fifteen. <laughs> it's like little scenes is the thing um and and, and the, the only one i remember i don't remember any of it except the finding it was hot but there's a lady who <laughs> she is instructed to pick up um a, a series of balls and she yeah. does it by you know like 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 a, like you know positioning her her vagina in such a way that she squats down onto them and so it's not like yeah <laughs> So she has to collect a number of um, of objects, and she does it in in that way with no hands. Yeah, that's which, by the way, is way more explicit than anything that happened in this book. And I got that from the public <laughs> library. <laughs> I do think what's interesting about this book, and I know, like, I guess this would go with our our number three question in a way, like the Bechdel to bitch question about like women's relationships, like. I mean, it kind of goes with it, but not because there are some interesting women relationships in this, but I guess just like we're talking about male authors versus females. Like, honestly, if from the jump, her one sexual relationship and one like emotional relationship had just been like, if she had been bought or like enslaved by Drusus, this would be a Joanna Lindsay book. Like this would be a romance yeah. novel. Like, I think mm -hmm. the big difference is, is like the various male sexual partners like mm. because honestly like because it's it's very much this like it's the same thing that we see oh, well, the, um, the absence of the importance that 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 romance novels of the time period especially historicals play placed on purity and of like um you you didn't see heroines i don't know how many romance novels you've read because I'm, I'm you know they might seem kind of tame <laughs> you know <laughs> Right, but uh, you know, like that, the, the women will be threatened to be raped by other people who are not the hero, but it almost mm. never happens. Yeah, there's yeah. always like the, the yeah, the, the the yeah, the implied threat of rape or you know the sexual yeah. There's always this sexual aggression thing that happens, and like our hero ends up being the one who saves her. But then a lot of times, like especially in the early romance novels, because the early romance novels obviously are written in like the early seventies women's revolution, women's sex revolution had just kind of happened. And you have this, this hump to get over with good girls and good, <laughs> girls, good girls aren't, but yeah, but they're not going to be the ones that go and just have sex because they're good girls. So we forcibly have to remove it. And essentially yeah. they'll have our, our hero or the person that you're supposed to root for rape these women. And yeah. it's not so much in the, like, I felt like this was, this is we have read i mean we have read a bunch of wild ass books like this is the not nearly as offensive as some of the other ones that we have oh my read. god the flame and the flower which yeah. is supposed to be like the first bodice rip uh, bodice ripper is 
like he just like rapes her and it is traumatic and yeah. terrible it's not like a ravishing it's not like a she kind of no no it is ugly and awful and like through the rest of the book it's just like um you know uh him figuring out how to not be so terrible yeah <laughs> yeah what, it's, it's awful yeah what i thought was really interesting in this book was um all the times that she's having to have sex with men at feasts or whatever and everything goes through her job as a slave you know what what her slave troop is hired out to do she doesn't consider that rape so yeah the um the rape in the alley it was i thought it was really interesting that yeah she didn't consider when um the having to have sex with clients or whatever as as rape you know or the sex that she has in her general day-to-day slave life as rape but when this random guy in the alley just stops her and forces her to submit to him and him have sex with her um she considers that rape and she feels violated by that whereas the others she's she doesn't feel violated and within gore um rules he was within his right legally to have sex with her. Like, you know, he was a slave. She's a slave. She's there for anybody's use. But um, she, they, they, she defines it as rape and feels that it's rape. And I think it's interesting because uh, they use that word several times, but they use yeah. it in ways, of course, that I would not use it and don't use it in places that I would use it. Mm. I don't think it's a status thing. Because when she's outside the tavern where she's been taken, she's actually a free woman, and but she's been taken to see the slaves and she's pretending to be a slave woman. And yeah. Drusus, or what's his name, leaves her out there for a minute. And some dude is like, aha. And then Drusus comes back out and like, oh, oh, sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's mine. And then he says, he thought you were out there for the raping. Yeah. Yeah, it's punishment. The guys thought that she'd been left out there as a master for anybody yeah, to rape um, as punishment, whereas, um, yeah, and then when this guy accosts her in the alley, it's um, a very different feeling for her to when she's, um, yeah, when she's working per se, mind you, it that feels really weird because me, me myself being a sex worker, the work and the rape and the and the things, they're all very different. So to shove them all together in my head's a bit, oh, uh, but um. Yeah, anyway, so she could be violently used by a client and that would be okay in her mind, but this guy randomly in the alley, then that's not okay in her mind. So it's really interesting, the different... And do you think that some of it is class-based? Because, of course, she's like a feast slave. She's yep. like, you know, there for, like, let's say weddings and bar mitzvahs. Mm. Um, and she's expecting to serve people of a certain status, whereas yeah. this man is like a common godsman. Uh, do you think that that's what they're talking about? Well, it could be that. Um, but then, like, you know, the con man trader sort of thing, she doesn't feel like that. She doesn't have that reaction to him. Right. So, right. Yeah, she he's not. Him. Yeah. Yeah. There is a dissertation to be written on the use of rape in this book, I think, yeah. the word. Yeah, it's the word. It's, yeah, it really is. And I don't want to belittle the word by, you know, by saying, oh, yeah, it's fascinating and really interesting, but it really is. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I mean, we're belittling the word slave. So, I mean, you know, I think everything yeah. is, 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 you know, it's yeah. up for grabs. Um, I, I do think that it has to do with expectations in some way. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you go to a banquet all the, these men who are there of like whatever, you know, wherever they're for, whatever, they all have a right to have you. Yeah. Or you're given as punishment to somebody, he has a right to have you. Somebody who comes upon you yeah. and takes you because he has a right to it, is that rape? I, it's, it's it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think I the like, expectation, yeah. Yeah, I feel like in her, like in every other previous experience of like her life on Gore, it's you know her her sexual ravishing her sexual like domination whatever is in this very like fantasy fulfillment way and then like this alley scene is this very real world way so it's kind of like you know what i mean like where 
Yeah, that's true. That's something that could actually have happened to many people as yeah. opposed to, you know. Yeah. Like, being a thief slave of the world. Banquet and just, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> it is, this book is wildly interesting for that. So, uh, what's our fourth question, Sarah? Lord, our questions. Um, oh, are you ready for our fourth question? Are you really ready for our fourth question? <laughs> Sorry, I can't figure out what's making so this beeping noise. Um, when it comes to consent, is this book more Robin <laughs> Thicke or Marvin Gaye? Oh, <laughs> Let's just throw that one out. Well, actually, we just talked about that. That's the discussion we just had. Like, what does consent mean in Gore? Well, I feel like, yeah. I mean, we've been talking about this this whole time. And I think this is really interesting. And I think it's a good thing for Honey to revisit on. And talking about, like, in this, like, work, fantasy world, like, the difference between this book and everything else is consent, you know, and no. like, um, I, sorry. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Just oh. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, um, it, when you look at this book in, in the rest of the series too, um, with women, when they have silk slaves, male sex slaves, they strap the men, the male slave down to the couch and just ride them like they're a toy and they don't allow them to put their arms around them or anything because that would be the, the man overpowering a free woman. It's like, whoa, what's wrong with her? Hug, a girl likes her, hug. Yeah, so this consent thing, you know, and this power because rape is all about power. It's not about sex. Um, and so these weird views they have on what is overpowering in this book is it's all kinds of fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that it is possible in the Gorian mind to rape a slave in the true sense? Like, in other words, if somebody snuck into your house like a thief, stole all your gold tarsks and fucked your slaves would that be okay no i don't think that? so because <laughs> um but then you you haven't put your your slave out for use you haven't got her out in the common use you've got her all yeah. neatly tucked yeah. away in your private property um so it's sort of like the difference, like if you left a gold plate out on the street and somebody picked it up and took it, well, that's finding it. If you put a, have a gold plate in your house and somebody comes into your house and takes it, then it's stealing it. Yeah. Because that's the, definitely the, the idea that I, I got from the idea that um, people didn't believe that she was free because she was obviously so fucking slave boobed. Um, but she didn't have a brand. And they're like, well, some people are so dumb not to brand their slaves. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and that's what I thought was so weird is that the branding happened off screen. I thought that the branding was going to be a big scene. <laughs> yeah, that was odd because when we do branding in the kink um, community, it's a very big special thing. Yeah. It's like I mean, like, I've never been I've, I've I've never been branded, but I have some tattoos, and it's a big deal. Obviously, I mean, you know, you're altering your body. Yeah. It's, Unless yeah. it, yeah, it, it took it, the view it, of it, it more it like be, branding at all. I was going to say, like, you've looked at it more of the view of, like, branding cattle. It's a it's a nothing. It's just what you do. You brand cattle. You, uh, it's it wasn't even that, though. Like, they didn't say she was taken to be branded. It was mm. this little coy thing. Like, she was mm. taken to a metalsmith and a thing happened to her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's got to be on purpose. I mean, you don't say that. That's a weird it's way to say weird. that. You say that because it do, that there's a reason to say that. Mm. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's very... Maybe impotent. He <laughs> doesn't like to talk about sex because, you know, <laughs> then... That. And then the branding's the whole penetration of a body again, and so he doesn't want to talk about that either. I, yeah, I mean, it's very coy, and yeah, you're right. Maybe it's a like that. That's part and parcel to him of the of the sex. Because I mean, I would think if you've got slave fires, they call it slave fires. Like yeah. that, that would be like the apotheosis, like the the culmination of your slave fires would be that brand hitting your leg. I don't mm. know. I mean, it, yeah, it's so interesting. Like the only like the only experience I have with branding is like. I work at an HBCU, and so, like, a lot of our, um... You should probably clarify that. 
uh, has she's definitely not black college university. So like a lot of our fraternities, like what they do are brand, it, they do branding and it's okay. very, very like, they don't talk about it. They don't, you know, so it could be that, that is just like a very, maybe like, like you said with the sex, maybe it's just a thing you don't talk about. Like, cause they're very really <laughs> secretive about it. You know, like all of a sudden they'll show up with like their, their Greek letters branded on their arm and, you're not getting that information out of them, you know. Um, and these are a bunch of straight dudes or a bunch of, like, largely straight dudes branding other straight dudes. So it is kind of this really interesting. Um, I would assume, well, though. That is fascinating. I had no idea about that. Yeah. So they, it's like what, the, it's like kind of like their fraternity rite of passage is branding, you know, getting a brand. But I would guess that there's other rights, um, secret rights to these to these young men that are associated with that that is a whole secret thing yeah, that it's it i mean because secret. this is obviously they make it extremely clear in this book that your branding and your collaring is transactional it happens mm. like you are a dog or a cow or a sleen I mean, or a tarn the brand, mm. though, they don't but what i'm saying is they don't brand over another brand i think like once you have the slave brand you have the no slave and that's the odd thing it's not a brand of ownership it's just a brand of enslavement yeah yeah, so they, sort of like when you tattoo a dog's ear when it's new. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, exactly. I think we talked over you, honey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sort of thing. Yeah. Like that. It's, it's like, not that, like, uh, you know, when you see a dog with a collar, the important thing is that it's somebody's dog. It's not yeah. like a stray dog. It's a, yeah, it's exactly. A dog. But you know that tattoo inside the dog's ear. I don't know if you do that in America, where they tattoo inside yeah. the ear if they've been spayed or neutered. So, um, actually, they, they, well, they do if it's trap, neuter, release. Um, uh, they'll they'll clip a cat's ear. Um, actually, it took me several months to Google why my new fucked up, absolutely worst dog I got from the shelter. Um, why her? I thought it was a pen mark um, by her um, by her space bar, scar wasn't going away. Well, evidently that they um, they'll tattoo it in um, in blue or green. Because you know you can't always see it on a dog's flesh. That yeah. you don't have to spay it again. Because of course you can't always see. It. Yeah, they yeah. do that. But I, I have heard about the ear tattoo um, in other places. I don't think they necessarily do an ear tattoo here all the time. Oh, okay, right, yeah. But yeah, but that's once again like I'm thinking maybe it's the same sort of thing. Like you know you've got the tattoo in the ear going. Oh, this dog's been done. It's 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 now dissexed. It's like oh, this slave's been done. It's a slave. <laughs> Because obviously there is clearly a, a vast difference and it cannot be moved between. Like we said, it only goes downhill. You do yeah. not move between being a slave and, and not a slave. Like, like in actual Imperial Rome, you could be a slave, then you could not be a slave, then you could be enslaved again. Mm. Um, it, you know, that was not a shadow slavery system. Whereas this, no, you're a slave, that is fucking it. And they even say, like, if you are um, stolen from a city... And they will take you and they will enslave you. If you escape and go back, you're still a slave. Mm. It does. In fact, when you think about it, make it like, why would you escape? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Our, our, fifth part, our fifth question does not really pertain to this because it's our, how badly are you judging your mama for reading this? And my mama if a mama made it through this entire fucking yeah. book. But my grandmother would not have known what any of this is. So. Sorry, mama <laughs> is like a real country ass, like I guess you'd say, a bogan way of saying your grandmother. <laughs> All right, I'm glad that we have this commonality. Question six. Would Scarlett Johansson be in this movie? I mean, obviously, because there's like, all of a sudden, this is a very, like we said, this is a very, everybody in this is white until they're not you know we get a couple of like instances yeah. of like other races described um so. the barbarians are earth people so it's your you can you can say like it's not that you're a racist because when you said barbarian you meant earth people yeah, <laughs> yeah the, <laughs> the barbarians were earth people yeah probably scar scarjo has been in a lot of our books yeah and that's kind of our yeah it's our racial question our racial index question like we're a lot of our books are basically racist by omission where there's no other race other than just white people hanging out. Um, but I do think it's interesting that we have the... Well, it's like, also uh, our LGBT. Uh, uh, we're doing number seven. Okay. 
Well, this one, like, it's hard. It's like, you're not leaving the house looking like that. This is where we talk about fun outfits, but all we have are, like, the slave tunics. We just but, yeah, he does. I mean, like, they are the well chastity belts. We get the chastity belts, which I'm always yeah. very interested in a in a chastity belt situation. Um. And that was kind of hot, actually, because it was, like, her talking about, he didn't think about what the girl would feel, but, like, that was... That was kind of titillating. Yeah. But the, the same things, mm-hmm. I mean, they, she talks so much about the slave silks that they actually got kind of boring. <laughs> I mean, they, yeah. they were well like described, but like, you know, normally they were like super deep V, you know, your titties on display and the short, short, short skirt. Although I found it difficult to understand, okay, in the normal slave posture, in which you do on your knees. Hello, are you still there? Yeah, um, I think we lost Sarah. Sarah's, yeah, Sarah's, I can't hear. Can you hear me? Talking about outfits somewhere. <laughs> can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, Verizon. Now. There she is. Verizon. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hello. Hello. Yes, we, we hear you. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was not clear to me, and I mean, this is a stupid thing to wonder. And to wonder enough to put in a podcast, but yet it's obviously important enough for this dude. Okay, so when you're sitting there in your gore pleasure slave kneeling posture, which we know so much about, can I see your JJ or not? Um. Well, do you have a? Th- well, I suppose you can see the the vulva. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's my thought. Is that like if it's as short as they say they are, that like when you're sitting like that, you can see your vulva. Yeah. But then again, I'm like, well, I don't know because they say short, but how short is it? Is it maybe like more of a teasy kind of thing where you can mm. see everything? I don't know. Because they talk about the back being open as well. Yeah. There's no yeah. neither closure because she can't just say it's not a romper. Yeah. <laughs> she says neither closure so many fucking times in this book <laughs> yeah there's so many yeah we don't have closures and you know what it missed a great opportunity and i think oh, it yeah. almost went for this opportunity but when she when they saw sheila's original clothing and it was panties and a bra it was titillating but they could have done more with that right yeah yeah okay <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, we have the slave silks and all that kind of stuff, too. But, like, it's nothing, like, super fun. I don't know. Again, aside from the chastity belts. I was interested in the chastity belts. They don't say anything about what the men wear. No. I didn't like that. I like to know what a man's wearing. All right, Sarah, question number eight. Would your 12-year-old self help dog any, have, have dog-eared any pages? And I feel, like this yes. is a good one. I feel like this is a good one for Honey because this is a book that she read, I mean, three years after, but this was a book you read when you were 15. So maybe talk yeah. a little bit, like, I mean, you talked about it a little bit before, like, about how, holy shit, like, this book is telling me things. So I, I definitely um, rubbed out a few over it. I, I had a bit of a fap and... <laughs> <laughs> does that count as dog earing the pages yes, or yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. but once i got to the end of the book it was like it was like it was my dirty shameful secret it was like no no i did not have those feelings no no we will never speak of them again which actually ended up um being a really bad thing i am um, mm-hmm. once i did join the the kink community as an adult and be able to Understand, understand my submissive side because I'm a switch. I, I don't just dom, and um, and start to understand that and how I'd repressed it by repressing it. It tried to find other ways to express itself, and basically, I ended up in all these um, so like violent, abusive relationships where I just in, endured the abuse trying to give them the world on the platter, trying to serve them, going, I, I love you, I love you, I love you, giving this just mad submission to, but no healthy boundaries or anything and just taking the abuse because, oh, my God, I love you. Um, so this is sort of like part of why I'm passionate about we need to find to educate and have healthy discussions about this and find healthy ways to express it because if we try to suppress this, um, it just it works out bad. Like right. we're wired that way. Kinky people are literally wired that way. They can't help it. Does that makes sense. I just kind of wonder if like what if 
the kind of tent pole <laughs> tent pole if the um the lodestone like the 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 thing that everybody read was not this but that's something that was more about consent and the give and take of power structures and uh like just what if it was written by a woman? What if this Ooh. whole thing were written by a woman? Would not it be so much healthier for so many people? Because this is a very, very popular thing. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with that because we've read a lot of things that are written by women that are massively Good point. unhealthy. Good point. Um, yeah. So I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a male female thing. And I think that does lead us to, to a good segue of like, are there things honey, that you would suggest that are like good depictions of, healthy bdsm or healthy like kink like healthy either books porn whatever like in the kink bdsm community that be like hey this is a good way to start exploring this you know oh like, oh gosh no <laughs> <laughs> i haven't come across them but i'm not actually a reader of erotica or such right. um i'm a fantasy sci-fi person i originally picked up this book going oh fantasy you know and stuff um but i did it was really interesting like i read this book at age 15 and had this response to it where i it brought out my uh, made me aware of my submissive urges and then i read another book as an adult and it's called owned and owner by anik or something like that jacob and it's a similar sort of thing like similar sort of world except for the women there's no nat women naturally on that world the women have to come from another world and they only go to this world if they choose to oh, so these women have consented to become slaves and um so there's that so i thought that was a better way to approach it because right. Right. um not only have they consented to that beforehand but i the interesting i found i reacted that book brought out my dominant side huh. rather than my submissive side so um i thought it was interesting how i reacted differently and from i wanted to then create i wanted my very much brought out a very strong urge for me to have a female submissive that I could shape into this beautiful um, walking art race sort of thing as opposed to just user abuse. And it, that feeling of her wanting it too definitely changed my attitudes to it, if that makes sense, how I reacted to the book. How do you feel about, um, obviously, I suspect that most things that are like this book are like this book, which, which is um, very size and age and everything else uninclusive. Like it even like even if you are obviously like a perfume model, you get put on the slave diet and then they're perfectly slave formed. Like how how what is your feeling about that and, and how that is so frequently like in fantasy literature, movies, all that kind of thing. The, the, the lack of size inclusivity of anything else, was that like? Yeah, it's pretty fucked up, hey. So I know understandably the author is going to write for what they consider a desirable, but not to have variety is pretty narrow-minded because we all – realize that other people have different tastes surely you would think surely surely authors have that much of like awareness of what's going on around them like I know um myself because like I'm a BBW so I'm constantly having to fight this uphill stigma with um both in porn and sex work like porn companies trying to get extra trying to get work with them because I'm not what society portrays as an an attractive size and then um with clients you know if a, if a group of clients come in they won't book me with their mates because they don't want to admit they're into fat chicks sort of thing so um but, and then they'll, like, come back later and book me when they're not with their mates and go, oh, you know, and it's this big confession that, like, they get really, like, shy and go, yeah, I, I, I like bigger women. Like, it's these shameful things. So it's really frustrating. The desire is out there. So many people love different body shapes than what society 
presents as desirable, but nobody wants to admit it because society's made such a big thing of that only small, tiny is attractive. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so if you're going to, like, write for the masses, you would think you would understand that there's more than one desired... I mean, to me, that's like the most unrealistic. Yeah, well, nobody needs to be on the side though. Some guys are ass people. Some people like boobs. You know, um, yeah. <laughs> some people like tummies. There's quite a few guys that, that like tummies. Yeah, of the the slave that brings you all this money. That like that. There's no market for like you know for big slaves, tall slaves, muscular slaves. You know, I mean, like that. There's there's no market for they, they make it extremely clear that there is like one they even talk about sizes of slave collars and and slave anklets and stuff but there is one ideal slave that is yeah. not men as i have ever met them yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's fucking bizarre you know? yeah. yeah so yeah um I mean, there is, like, I feel like on Gore, there's not a whole lot of variation, like, because there's not, like, everybody's just like, oh, my slave fire is burned this way, like, for as kinky as it is, like, it's kind of one, yeah, like, it's not like, hey, it's boring. I like this, it's, I like that. It's yeah. boring. Come on, Gore. It's boring. It's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? I mean, Sorry? People are tough. Go ahead, honey. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say another thing just um, randomly that I found interesting about the book is for the guy, for the author, obviously being a kinkster, he didn't go much into the masochism of it and the saddest sides and everything. You know, you know, yeah, people get whipped for punishment, but he didn't really go into the whippings and the, the details. It's another one of those things that he sort of just like skipped over. Yeah. It's like he liked the idea, but didn't really want to, didn't like the, uh, I don't know, the application. Mm. I was like, mm. when, he, when he talks about the whip dance, I was like, well, what the hell's the whip dance? I want to know about the whip dance. And then it was like, well, the whip dance happened. I was like, son of a, I want to know. Like, I kind of yeah, liked yeah. who it was. Like, was it Susan who did the whip dance? I was like, oh no, the whip dance is like not this thing. Like, you don't have to really do a dance. You just have to make them want to fuck you. <laughs> it was still such a build up. I was like, what's going on? Um, yeah. So, like, I thought yeah. it was going to be like the dance of the seven whips, you know? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> I was super for it, but all right. Okay. So, <laughs> instead of our last question, which is usually our what pairs nicely with a dumpster fire, like, we really appreciate you coming on here and talking with us. Um, and we'll just leave it like, is there anything about. This well, I did actually pair a drink with this. Oh, what did you pair? Oh, oh sorry. Well, then I absolutely I have been drinking. It's it's a lovely Australian beer. It's James Squire, oh, one fifty lashes pale ale. Oh, oh. That's way better than ours. Like that's so great. That's <laughs> oh, <amazing. well>, then... <laughs> Courtney, did you say what you're drinking? I forgot if you said. I am drinking. So, I'm drinking something yeah. called Sheep Thrills. It's got a little sheep on it. I felt like it kind of fit. Um, <laughs> but it's not it's not James Squire 150 Lashes. That's amazing. <laughs> he won the award for like best, yeah. drink, you know, going. Dramatic. That's awesome. <laughs> we were drinking her box wine. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is, I, I did actually look at it when I went up in the in the break. It is Australian. Oh, there you go. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> yes, it says uh, that it has won eighty nine awards, but it does not say which which awards those were. Yeah, yeah, no, they could be some piddly little fucking church award, <laughs> right. little country. Uh, but... Please tell me that churches in Australia hand out wine awards because churches in South Carolina do not hand out wine awards. <laughs> no, 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 I can't say I've ever known one too, but you know, I'm just thinking of the little community fate, church fates where the ladies have, you know, the prize winning roses or whatever. It's like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. wow, your geraniums are the best in all of a town of 300 people. <laughs> We do have garden gloves. We do have those. Yeah, yeah we do. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> this has been amazing. Um, I'm trying. Yeah, I mean, you talked a lot. I really appreciate you talking about like the kind of impact that this book had for you. And I guess, like, is there anything you want to leave us with? Like, 
Well, do you have anything else that you'd like to say about, um, I mean, we talked about, do you think that there's any foundational kink books? And you said no, but do you think that there's any other books that you read when when you were young that you yeah, that you found like, what, yeah. intriguing in some way or the um so what books in general or kink? Sorry, what do you well, mean? The, the, the lit your slave fires. <laughs> the lit my slave fires. Well, no, because I went into hardcore denial after reading this yeah. because I didn't yeah. understand that. Um, it can still be empowering. It takes a lot of strength, actually, to be a submissive or a slave. It's not this demeaning, degrading, less than thing that people think it is. But um, it takes a lot of self awareness and and you know and strength, especially in our society that teaches it's such a bad thing to then admit that that's something that you desire. And the self acceptance around that is is huge. And then you've got to you got to do your research and your learning and stuff like that, so you don't end up in an abusive dynamic. But also, you know, you've got to communicate and all these other things that we're just simply not taught mm-hmm. about sex in our society. Um, it takes a strong like you think about because I deal mainly with male subs. Yeah, I know numerous huge, great, big, burly, strong guys that are submissive. So you think of the personal strength it must take for those guys to be out and proud um, going, no, I'm a sub. I like being pegged by my missus who's Mm -hmm. my, you know, and things like this. In this modern society that's full of all this toxic masculinity, um, and that takes some amazing strength to be able to admit that and own that. And then, uh, you yeah, know, it's, I'm, yeah, it's, I, I really, really wish that we could create more conversations around this and educate people so they can learn to accept themselves in all these colourful sorts of variations that each of us are because if we don't, it's we end up in bad places. Um, it's just, yeah, yeah. yeah I know I'm pretty much saying the same message in different ways. It's I just yeah, like, oh, yeah. please, people, you're not freaky. <laughs> you're, you're, you're human. <laughs> you're amazing and my absolute favourite and this has been awesome. And, again, everybody go listen to – my mom, M-U-M, my mom is a porn star because it's it's a great podcast for sexual health. And I think hopefully one of the things that new millennial, you know, new millennial, we're in the 20 years into it. Like people yeah. really understand that sexual health is part of like being healthy all around. And you guys do a great job in exploring that. So it's a great cool. podcast for that. So. Yeah, and, and funny also. It's and, so funny. And, and, and y'all's, uh, y'all's accents are the cutest thing. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got to give her a little bit of shit. The poor <laughs> talent. No, no, mom, I don't want to know. <laughs> She's so great, and I, I think also I think it's a really good thing for people to listen to because y'all, in spite of her, her, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Like y'all have the greatest mother daughter dynamic, and I think especially if you're in a lot of cultures where moms and daughters don't talk about sex. Like, yeah. It's really something that people need to listen to because y'all have an amazing relationship and a very candid relationship. And yeah, yeah my mom has listened to exactly like two episodes of this podcast <laughs> and she has had like complaints about both. Yeah. We do not talk about sex. <laughs> Even though I, I stole these books from her. Yeah. But she yeah. said, oh, no, I didn't read that stuff. Like, Mama, I took that from your bookshelf. And I remember where it was because I put it back every night when I was done reading it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, I didn't read that. Yeah. And this is the thing, this is this ongoing shame spiral that, you know, that we pass down to our children and then it just keeps fucking up the world. And then you look at all the horrible things that are happening in your country at the moment with the abortion laws and everything and it's just like, 
Oh, it could be another well, three hours of us. Yes, like yeah. I, I hope that this is not the third one she chooses to listen to. I suspect she would have quit by now. But <laughs> my mother, a couple months after my dad died, told me at lunch she like got me ready for it. She's like, "Well, just so you know, I've been thinking about having dinner with somebody." Yeah, and I was like, "Okay." So I have heard that in nursing homes and other old, like senior living facilities, they have major outbreaks of sexually transmitted infections because y'all all were banging before the AIDS crisis. So what you need to know is that you need to wrap it up, okay? <laughs> like I was, I gave her this like, and I would not look her in the eyes, but I was like, "Mom, shut up. You might not know this. We're not going to have eye contact, but I'm going to explain this to you." <laughs> <laughs> because the last time that she had sex with somebody who wasn't my dad was 1978 if, if she had a sex with anybody who wasn't my dad and you know it's been in some time and you can catch herpes outside of a condom and she doesn't necessarily know that so it was a weird lunch <laughs> yeah and, and yeah so well, good on you for sharing that knowledge with her and pushing through the awkwardness to you know <laughs> Please let this not knowledge. be the one episode she chooses to actually listen all the way through our I podcast. I really appreciate this story. <laughs> I <still> love, <laughs> yeah, it. I love it. It's great. It's great. Oh, well, probably a good thing I, um, I was going to say, probably a good thing I didn't touch on, you know, like shitting in clients' mouths and things like that. <laughs> oh, that really no, actually, that would have been better because that would have actually guaranteed that she would not have made it all the way. <laughs> Well, that's really <laughs> really about her and I having a lot of conversation because, like, I need to know more about it. But um, <laughs> we, know you have, we know you have lunch coming because, yeah, our time difference is wildly different. And I really appreciate you coming and joining us. This has been I I had fun with this. This was awesome. Oh my god! Man. So oh, awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You were so great. So. Again, yes. thank you so much for your good sport about this. I know. Like you know, <laughs> um, playing playing game, like you know, catch with us. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is so much fun. Thank you. You've been a very, very generous um, guest. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> there you go. It's good old Aussie hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> Was there anything else that you would like to push people to when we hit stop recording? Any, like, uh, say the name of your podcast again, if anything else. Okay. So, yeah. So, if you want to like listen to me and my daughter talk shit about sex, then it's um, my mum is a porn star. So, mum, the Aussie spelling with a U. Um, if you'd like to follow me and my other exploits, if you just Google Miss Honey Anal, you'll find me. I'll pop up. <laughs> so, yeah. As things do. <laughs> Sorry. As things do. Oh, yes. I do love a good pun. Yeah. Boom tish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good, good dick, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have educational videos and that out there floating about as well and all that yeah. sorts of shit. But, you know, Google, it happens. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Insta. I'm I'm even on TikTok. Um. Yes, and we will have, like, our like all of your information in our show notes and stuff too. So Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, if you want to connect with Honey, you will be able to see it if you go to bottomsipplers.com. Bottomsipplers is part of the Frolic Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcast.